Yes! Yay, Mandalorian episode seven. Oh my goodness, Yay. I'm so happy and excited. I have preed. Just at cold. I never watched episode I... six. Just came from that. Whoa, so good. Yeah, that was crazy. Oh wow, that Mind stuff blown. that you just watched. Remember the boulder, and remember the not jetpack. So good, <laughs> so good. And who's this? What's happening? It's Shadow Vist. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god! Oh my god! How do you? Mandalorian uh, you... been life changing for me, and 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 hearing you guys that you love it so much, I was like, oh, that, this would be great to join. I'd love to. But we Hell can yeah. all just share in the awesomeness. What did you think of episode six, Shad? <laughs> <laughs> life changing. I mean, seeing Boba Fett do Boba Fett stuff. Oh I, mean, yeah. I don't know about you guys. It's like rockets hit. out of the knees. Rockets could come from other places, but the knees. So what? that, that was the, should... actually the first thing I wanted to ask you. I was like, what were you thinking about the knee rockets? What's, what's the commentary there? Usually the knee is the target of projectiles. You know, arrows more often than not. Mm. But when you actually see a projectile coming from a knee, that's like getting attacked from something that's usually weak and, and yeah. little. And then seeing something so powerful come from something that you think no. is so weak oh, yeah. that like i would run away i don't know about you guys, i know, I know. classic boba fett oh yeah are we saying like like a baby but with a chainsaw that sort of thing where you're like oh my god yes. that's supposed to be so threatening well no th peaceful someone's gonna say it in the comment section better to get it out now it's like that's not disney though that was made by the star wars people in lucasfilm from ages ago why are you making fun of them for it okay so he didn't shoot from his knee rockets in any of the other movies so this is the movie yeah. he did it in. <laughs> i don't know what to tell you can I also point out, like, that would be one of the most difficult places to try and aim a projectile. Absolutely, yeah. Like, <laughs> and, I guess let they... alone, how do you activate it? How do you get it to, like... Well, eh. I'm assuming they're homing, to answer that. That's, that's probably what they are. Because they floop around before they hit the targets, right? So they're homing. So, criticism destroyed, Shad. Get wrecked. Wow. Oh, I, dab. Um, I'm dabbing. I'm sure, as Fringy pointed out in the episode, I think, it's like, how the fuck do you restock your knee rocket? Who is selling knee rockets? It's <laughs> like, at the same time, selling who's selling no, homing knee rockets? He knows, knows a, he knows a guy who makes the knee rockets. What, what about the whistling birds and the jetpack rockets? Like, yeah. What, where is he well, restocking yeah. birds? No idea. I'm, I'm pretty sure we haven't been keeping track of it. Apparently, really rare. For some reason, you need Beskar to make whistling birds. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know I, why. I don't know about that. So, why? in the first I mean, season, he got a know. full stock of them, used a couple, and then he got restocked at the end, right? Unless, like, he can salvage them after a fight and just, like, <laughs> take them off the dead corpses and re put them back in. But because we never see that, I mean. Yeah. I've, yeah, I made a video talking about that. There might be answers to some of the world building issues, but they never address them. They just ignore so much crap, which just leaves you hanging like, oh, uh, okay, wait, where is he why? getting the rockets and the whistling birds now? When, when, you're not telling us. Well, I mean, why would we need to know where he gets the things he uses to shoot the people, which is all he does? Yeah, that's nitpicking. No, I, mean, I mean, the items that a protagonist has access to, which I mean, then determines all of the things they're able to do in a story, that's not important or anything. No, it's not, I mean, it, it's not important for things that are already established that they're plentiful and freely available, like whatever gas powers the handguns, Oxygen. which I've been told is going to be an item of conversation in this next episode, so I'm paying attention. Hey. But the whistling birds, that was shown that these things are hard to make. They make they're made out of Beskar, and so and they're really OP and is using it often now. That's why there's a question really around these things instead of regular handgun ammunition in this This series. is highly specialized equipment, you know, <laughs> yes. as, as opposed to, hey, where to get the magazines for his pistol? It's like, well, any number of places. Yeah, hey, you'd think those are standardized to a degree. You'd be like, I can oh, yeah, picture them coming from those places, but, but Hobig knee rockets or whistling birds, no. Maybe there are, like, assembly lines for knee rockets, you know, mm. this hyper-specialized one weapon that we've only ever seen. You know seen someone one. said that in the comment section, right? <laughs> like, hey, I, can I can picture it. I can picture it. It's absurd but okay okay star wars blasters all right how much ammo do these things have just what has been established in the in the live action property so far lots it was always my understanding because it never it was never an issue and it never needed to be explained but apparently the cells that would be used in blasters the e11s that the stormtroopers would typically use they would have cells that would that would be able to fire like 100 shots each 
And so it would make sense that you'd never see a stormtrooper reload. They're not in frame long enough. We don't see individuals long enough shooting that many shots. Mm -hmm. um, might have been a neat thing to show one or two here and there, right? Like if this were the, yeah, the case. Yeah, possible. I think it is fair to assume for some people that they might be infinite just from... Yeah. You should be like, yeah, they you, have been see, you could assume that, sure. Virtually, yeah, extremely large, virtually infinite. They, it, it, weapons have a very high capacity of shots in them, uh, whatever mechanism they use. As a writer, I think it would be better if they weren't infinite, because it kind of presents, yes. I think, a couple of issues in terms of... Wouldn't that be like perpetual energy? Well, it depends. They could be self-recharging cells. I mean, uh, technically, you know, this isn't mentioned in the live-action properties. It's all expanded stuff. But they work off some type of gas, and I forget the names, like something that starts with a B or something. Mm -hmm. Some gas that gets ionized and then shot. Um, and it's, like I said, by what is shown, it is either crazy high ammo capacity or, or infinite, but because of the expanded works, they clarify it. It's like 100 to 500 shots per gas canister, basically. Yeah. So it's a huge amount. Yeah, but it is you would be lot. justified in assuming it's even infinite because we've never seen anyone in a live action property need to reload. Just mm -hmm. So far, so far. The only time I've really ever in a Star Wars property could remember any reference to this being even kind of mentioned was in episode four of season two in The Mandalorian where you have three or so stormtroopers coming up in the elevator and getting out of the elevator at the base. And one of them mentions like, make sure your weapons are loaded because they're going into a combat zone. So I guess one of them's like, yeah, make sure your guns are loaded or something like that, which is fine with me because I mean, obviously a, a weapon can be loaded and unloaded. It's just, that's the only well, time I've ever really heard anything referenced. I think we, we did a like duo that. zinger on that one because your your response to it is like, why wouldn't they be loaded when you're literally like, do they not know what they're doing? Like literally walking into a, you know, the, a, a firefight. A, like, by call it was why. <laughs> What's the point in them shooting their guns? Yeah, they're going to make anyway. And it, 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 if they do hit something, it'll be the best guards, uh, armor that Mando exactly. has. So it doesn't matter. God, that's, that's done so well this season, hasn't it, Shannon? The best guard armor. <sighs> Fantastic. <laughs> Someone, um, I can probably give it to Shad later on. Someone basically did a bunch of calculations here on the sheer probability of all of the shots that he takes hitting his armor. If he was going to be generous and assume that Mando's armor covered 95% of his body, which is obviously being super generous. This is just for the lulls of probability. If he was 95% blaster proof, then there would be a less than 1% chance of him escaping unharmed because of how many times he shot. <laughs> well, he's got the luck of the force. He does. Oh, he has no. the luck of the force. I just want to point out something that has really bothered me. Is it episode two where he's transporting the frog lady? Yes. Episode two, season yes. two? Yes. And they say no hyperspace. Yes. And is traveling to another planet, not in hyperspace. I'm assuming that this planet is not in the same star system as Tatooine. <laughs> Yeah, uh, at the and, beginning of our coverage of episode three, I think Rags is yeah, like, "Oh, if, there's a planet there. Oh, okay, like we." we yeah, it's like, yay. well, yeah. If if you are, if it's even, um, if you're thinking about using hyperspace, it's probably not like from here to the moon or from here to Mars. Yeah, right. Which is already so if really you, far. If you have, for yeah, if you have to, if you have to travel slower than the speed of light, you getting there is. It's not going to happen in your lifetime. Exactly. And I heard this like, <laughs> what, what, how can you get there without using hyperspace? It's the only way that would be possible is if it's in the same solar system and it's really close and they're going very, very quick, just not technically hyperspace. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's one of those just sort of like don't think about it shit. at all in any way kinds of things. Oh, definitely. They, threw in. they deliver this information, the writers, and then they look left and right and left and right at the at the audience like you guys, like, none of you are complaining, right? <laughs> oh, okay, so. I don't know anyone who has like the, even the slightest exposure to science fiction, let alone just science and basic size of space travel, right? This would, is so blatantly obvious that it's like not traveling hyperspace, you will not get to your location. If these planets are in the same star system that means there's two planets that are in the goldilocks zone around the same star that tatooine is on but there are two suns so there's that but still that's like 
never established in any Star Wars anything that there was any other habitable planets near Tatooine because there was the ice planet and the water planet that Mando gets to just under regular thruster power, not going hyperspace. If you're going to make a science fiction story, if you're going to make a science fiction world, one of the first things that you have to do is you're going to have to come up with a, an answer and be consistent with it for how you do interplanetary travel. It's yep. got to be portals. It has to be faster than light jumps. It has to be mass relays. It has to be navigating the immaterium. It has to be something. You've got to come up with a, a solution to this issue. And then you got to stick with it and stick with its rules. Hence why they all have one, but then some of them will just randomly be like, we don't need that today. You're like, no, you yeah, can't. You no, do. stop. <laughs> and in, just in relation to his armor, this is the image that goes around a lot, and I just want us to yep. make sure we comment on it. So the, the original mm -hmm. trilogy one, I guess you could say the commentary there is that they miss a lot, and uh, even when they've got <laughs> a straight shot, or we see shots going toward them, they just not hit. And uh, I assume this relates more to <laughs> half of Empire and all of Return of the Jedi, probably. Yeah, the OT is, it, it's kind of half and half. Yeah. Um, I like the... Uh, you do see yeah. um, uh, Leia get shot in the shoulder, but she that's does. Like the only time. I like the prequel one. It's like they only ever hit the lightsabers yeah. or the ground. <laughs> but you might think to yourself before you've continued the meme, it's like, what about Revenge of the Sith? And it's like, ah, oh, well, when you put sad music on, it's... Uh... <laughs> yeah. Oh, you... Yeah. Sorry there. <laughs> and then the Mandalorian Brother, one's man. perfect. And it's in-universe music, too. When when that was part of Order 66 was to play the music. Yeah. And so everyone's like, what the? What? what where's that music Everybody's coming from? Gets really oh, my good. powers are weakening with every note. All no. The, all the ah, droids no. start to charge up. They're like, oh, shit. I'll aim. Oh. And yeah, the Mandalorian shit, man. Oh, stormtroopers. You think it can't get worse, and it just keeps getting worse. I'm sorry. I missed. <laughs> yes. Oddly enough, like, the Mandalorian is bad. Like, really out there bad yet i'm still enjoying it and so it's what this one this series oddly is falling into one of those categories of guilty pleasure it's bad yet i can still enjoy it things Am oh, I the yeah, only it's, one it's, getting it's that definitely in batwoman territory, territory. <laughs> i mean i it doesn't surprise me at all that people enjoy it. after that bova episode nice shot like yeah of course i get why people are loving this it's just uh <laughs> it's, oh know. yeah it's bad like there is some like howlers uh, multiple times in every episode where it's just like what yeah i mean it, as an unintentional comedy it's it's really great i guess it's just it's a little bit kind of depressing that like the last episode is the most highly rated because it's so transparent why that is yeah oh it's pure fan service well and people yeah. will, like i'm gonna show some of these but people will go as far as saying like boba fett is killing people this is star wars and you're like oh oh Star Wars says Boba Fett killing kindergartners. Okay. Yes. Well, it is actually a bit of a um, break in what is previously an established making Boba Fett so competent because he wasn't that competent. Have you seen Return I, of the Jedi? I disagree. He was actually, I yeah, disagree. He was what, what would you cite would be why he's incompetent in Return of the Jedi specifically? Well, there's the jetpack part. What was incompetent about him in that moment? Probably having a button on the back of his jetpack and not being able to well, readjust thrusters or control it so it something in. they um seem to actually bank on in episode one of this show uh, season two was that there seems to be a fault with mandalorian mm. jetpacks where if you bang them on the back they will activate like they rely on that that's apparently a thing like that's a design flaw <laughs> with whoever makes these jetpacks obviously but uh we don't actually know if he was aware of that and like the idea that you're wearing a jetpack and someone just sets it off out of your control it's like i don't know i don't i don't know that that's what are you gonna do about that you know well every time he tries to fight someone in return of the jedi he gets smacked down instantly you know well, is it mean, because luke skywalker is pretty good but uh, so, so he doesn't really succeed in much what i would cite is uh for some reason boba jumps from the barge onto the specific platform that luke is on when he's got a lightsaber i just be like why didn't he why not not get close to him that's probably not yeah shoot him from a distance Cause, yeah because that that <laughs> moment has issues but like i'd say empire no stab him with your gun boba <laughs> <laughs> i'd say that uh empire shows uh, that Boba is actually quite competent. We um we were watching a little bit of it, like I want to say a couple months ago, and I was I, I was interested in showing you that bit where it. Uh...
it sets up that he, he clues on to Luke being behind the corner because he hears the gun being... Uh, uh, oh, yeah, good point. And, of course, he doesn't give away that he knows. Uh, yeah, and he's, he... only, and he's one of the few people that is actually able to track a Han Solo, like... Yeah, I always thought the Boba was pretty competent, but, like, there are clearly... You know, like, he's hitting people with the stick, and then later we see that he's put on the helmet and the and the, the, the armor in, in Mando, but he's now using a pistol. It's like, wait, where was that before? Why weren't you using that before? <laughs> like, are you an idiot? Like, why would you... Uh, and then you say that, but it's like, well, the stick's really effective against Stormtroopers. Like, shut up. Please shut up. Like, that, that's got a lot of this. problems already. <laughs> yeah, so, uh... I'm okay with him being competent. I just don't know that what we saw was an example of it because he's fighting idiots. Like, all of them don't shoot yeah. at him or don't do what they should do, and then they all run away, and it's just like, yeah. Maybe it's a matter of scale because he, like, technically kicked butt, like, massive butt in the last episode, and he takes on how many stormtroopers just with I a don't... I can't give anybody props in this show for killing stormtroopers. No one's cool when you <gasps> kill stormtroopers. It's like saying, it's like being the toughest kid in third grade. Good for you. And you were held you're, back two years. You're the years. toughest third grader, yeah. But you're <laughs> actually not in third grade. You're you're actually just, you're, you're a UFC fighter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, seems unfair. I feel like <laughs> stormtroopers are so worthless and pathetic that you, you've lowered your, you know, Zulu, right? Zulu, the movie. Mm -hmm. They're ferocious, man. Those Zulu, they'll fuck you up. Those are... Those are those are fearsome warriors. Even though they're technologically far behind, they are they're ferocious. They're they're brave and they charge and they're 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 they'll fucking stab you with their speed. They're they're they're, they're really competent enemies. You know, considering you know when the English beat the Zulu after this ferocious fighting, it makes them seem more competent because they had competent enemies that they defeated. They weren't just shooting fish in a barrel all movie. Uh -huh. idiots who didn't know what to do or well it's kind of like if you're a level 80 in like world of warcraft and you go to that mm -hmm. early you know the opening level of the game and just kill a bunch yeah. of like level two dogs out the i forest. brought my level 80 max character back to the starting zone and i yeah. fucked up some boars <laughs> and then someone's gonna be like in fairness guys they have armor that's immune to black and you're like stop just stop please stop i need you to stop like he... yeah, stop it. <laughs> the stormtrooper armor has reached new levels of uselessness. Well, yeah, you like... can so it with a big stick. I did, yeah, I don't <laughs> yeah. have a screenshot for it. It was just one of the things I saw in passing. Uh, was I just saw one of the newest comments on our coverage? Uh, what's the armor even for if you just get wrecked by a stick? And I like it, it was just like yeah, I, I don't get a bit lost now. Like he hits one of them in the head with a stick and it just blasts open all of the. It's like oh okay. Yeah, yeah that was like. Oh, wow. So the armor will crack open, shatter in pieces with a solid enough hit from a stick. It's like, that's not what armor's supposed to do. Like, oh. this, this armor is holding you back. It's clearly cumbersome, and the helmets are probably shit. In relation to the armor stuff, um, and I was in a call, I think with Fringy at this point, but I saw a conversation going on about how wrong we were for pointing out that it's silly that they're aiming to punch his armor as opposed to doing literally anything else, like getting a shank at any part of uh, his, his exposed body. Wait, wait, you're talking punch? Yeah, yeah they were s highlighting us, saying like the EFAB crew has no idea that it's actually very viable to punch someone in the helmet to disorient them. So if you hit someone who's wearing uh, like an actual proper helmet that won't shatter, and you hit him with a pole axe, okay, the sheer acceleration that the head feels from that knock can still cause the brain to like ricochet off the inside of the skull and do mm -hmm. some damage. And you might not have got gotten anywhere near penetrating the actual armor, but you can damage someone through concussive force through a helmet. But that's with a pole axe. Yeah. You're not gonna yeah. do that with a punch. <laughs> yeah. They were Whoever like... said that I want you to try a bicycle helmet or just a bike helmet and like a big one that you I, use I your just, motorcycle. Um, the sort of nature of the conversation, it just blows my mind. It's like we're clearly commenting on you have many options and you choose a very low viability one and you do it three times. <laughs> like that's an easy criticism. It's done. <laughs> yeah. And then someone's response is you can affect people by punching them in their helmets. It's like what you just said addresses nothing of what we said. Like I don't even know why you bothered. <laughs> It's just fun because we've been getting a lot of that with Mando coverage because it's, I think it's so blatantly bad in some cases. You have to change what we've said in order to respond to what we've said. People didn't get to... do not like hearing you criticize it. No. My last video is getting a bit of a bit of a negative reaction because if you watch my video, I'm actually pretty darn light on my criticism because I, I, I'm very open. I say, look, I do enjoy it, okay? 
And I don't even talk about the plot issues. It's just world building <laughs> things. And then I even say that there's ways you could fix it, yet still that has ticked off a good portion of people. Like, oh, you're Ooh. in the right company now. You're going to tick off a whole bunch of people. Well, <laughs> our comment section honestly is turned on Mando by now, so I'm fine with it. I think people are mostly chilled <laughs> out, especially after the last one. Who knows what we got coming to this one? But yeah, something we did mention in our coverage of Episode 6, but we've talked about it uh, since, is that, yeah, he does have a remote control for his jetpack, so no matter where it is, you mm -hmm. can press a button it'll come to him that just makes it even worse that is <laughs> yeah, <it's dark. laughs> it's just like oh my god man Sorry. why he's so incompetent people have a blind spot with this show i'm just i'm thoroughly convinced of it oh yeah uh they just they do not treat this with the standard that they treat the sequels the more you look into mando the worse it gets it, it really is just a mess of world building so instead of raining the sh shots down onto the targets in the in the zone in episode six instead like so that's like number one choice number two sending the dark troopers to fight rather than your worthless other guys. Number three, instead of firing at the people from the ships. I don't even know if that's more or less viable than the previous, like it's between those two, whatever. And then the fourth one being dropping off the troopers in like any place other than the kill zone for two snipers. And then you have like all these options and the Empire chose literally the worst, which is just open them out in the bottom of the hill and they run. We go over it kind of vaguely, but it's just like, what is the scenario here? The Empire arrive, they spot these people, they're going to send stormtroopers to attack them. And if that fails, they will fire a shot at his razor crest. You, yeah, you can't even uh, figure out what the the goals are here. Assume to capture Baby Yoda, but you'd think you'd have to neutralize the people with the guns first. And the thing that annoyed me is like these dropships have guns on them. Yeah. And so you think you could just Which shoot would be pretty them, powerful. Like, They're pretty big. The, you know, the Star Destroyer. We were really laughing at it, and um, I was talking to Jay about the clip with the... Because I think he, he was curious about how the how she pushed the boulder over, which is... I think a lot of people point that to a criticism if they don't see the context of it. It's hit with a mortar first, to loosen it. And then uh, Jay was like, oh, so that's why there's a mortar then. Because, like, we were all like, what the fuck do they have a mortar for? It's so weird that they just have a mortar? Like, what are the I, odds? I don't, I, don't think it's, I don't think it's weird that they have a mortar. I think it is. Well, I, I mean, they're, they're very useful. Yeah. Yeah, well, lots of things are very useful. I, I don't, I don't think well, that justifies having a random have... fucking mortar. It, it, oh, it, I, I'm not very... surprised to have one. It, it, it's an, in, it's an extremely useful indirect fire piece of equipment that any well, army would use. That's the point there and... that you can, you can lob it in a, in an arc to get, you know, yeah, overcover. it's, it's still looks nobody, very nobody's nobody is questioning what mortars do that's that's clearly not what we're gunning for. It's the fact that you have a drop shit of stormtroopers and one of them has a mortar. <laughs> That is absurd. What the fuck? When does that ever happen? I don't, th I don't think it's absurd. I think it is. One of them has a turret. Like, the, the, yeah, they, 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 they often have turrets. Them. I guess some scraps who agree to disagree on this one. I think it's fucking crazy that they have a mortar, that the only reason they do have it is to justify the boulder being pushed. Yeah, that, that's all they yeah. use it for. Yeah, certainly. But because they're stormtroopers, so they can't use anything for shit, which is how they justify it just being like, oh, all it does is loosen this boulder so she can push it at them, which is a thing that happens that I have to constantly remind myself is a thing that they had happen. Yeah, because uh, I don't think I don't think we've even ever seen a mortar in Star Wars before, not including whatever shows I haven't watched. I'm trying to think. I don't think we've seen one yet. I wouldn't give it any slack whatsoever if it was a weapon that was really stupid and impractical and pointless. Like a catapult, they just have one. That like, would be yeah, hilarious. they just have like a catapult, <laughs> or or if we are a random ballistas for some reason. <laughs> I found it interesting that like it's such a like whoa why the why do they even have that like it's so unusual for stormtroopers and then it's like oh yeah of course because even though you could have just done that with a grenade loosening the boulder um, uh yeah you could have maybe I mean a mortar would be more powerful but yeah a grenade will probably yeah this was on metal stream they were like why uh do you, do you <laughs> think it makes sense that Boba Fett tracks Mando's ship so he would have to have a tracker for it on it, which I I don't know when he would have had the chance. Because um, it would have been from episode one to... You kind of just allow them that, I guess. He's just like, yeah, I guess Boba Fett placed the tracker on there. At some yeah. time, that makes no sense according to when we see him and what he would have to do. It's not impossible, but it seems like any time or place where it could have happened. And yeah, obviously just, just reaffirming, it's like uh, Boba waited until Mando got his armor instead of doing anything before that. You'd think he would have attacked Cobb Vant or whatever, Cobb Vant? Oh yeah, his name. it's like if he wanted the armor, he could have grabbed it any time on Tatooine. Yeah, um, and you must have been keeping an eye on Mando as well because he turned up in episode uh, four of season one, right? I don't know. Yep. I don't know what Boba's been up to this whole time. I don't know what his MO is. 
kind of weird but he's in it now and he's shooting his guns so something that i saw someone commenting on that we didn't really say anything about they broke into the cockpit in episode three with uh with the shot that you see it looks like they shot the door and it just opened up and it's like damn you'd think that they would have uh had blast doors or lockdowns for the, the cockpit they even have them for that room earlier where they locked them in the reactor not reactor control room that's a different stupid and a different episode but the um cargo control room they lock them in there so it's, it's just funny like the last thing they've got to get to is the cockpit and they just blast it open you're like oh all right we said like if you were to inspect these a little further that i think that a lot more things will start popping up you're just like oh no you asked me to clarify, so it's worth uh, bringing up, because I can't remember if we actually covered it in episode 6, but the the implication is he wants Mando's armor, and then the counter is um, the bounty on Grogu's head is enough to get 10 of your uh, your bounty suits, meaning that Grogu's value is, is incredibly high right now. He's, he's apparently gone up by 10 times, mm -hmm. because the original bounty was, and, and this was uh, said by Grief Karga in episode 3 of season 1, and with it, the richest reward this Parsec has ever seen. Please, sit, my friend. We can multiply that by 10 now. That's, uh, that's the price on yeah. uh, the, the Grogu's, he uh, Grogu's head to be uh, turned in is. But apparently no one really does anything for it. You saw the Even amount of bounty hunters yeah. that had the job for Baby Yoda when the price was, you know, All tenth. of them. And now it's... And not only that... The difficulty it was to try and escape them. Mando went to one of the most backwater planets he could find, and it only took a couple of days for a bounty hunter to find him <laughs> in that situation. No, it took it took two weeks. Oh yeah, yeah. Two Time does travel a bit in that, yeah. Which is still odd and leaves a lot of questions, but you're like, okay, you can go somewhere, but eventually in two weeks randomly, he was gonna kill Baby Yoda for reasons. So uh, fun, but luckily it? Cara Dune was there through the power of editing. Uh, to save uh, him at the last moment, but yeah, when it when it comes to something like this, uh, you fobs were a fucking mistake. Well, it seems the show <laughs> agrees with you now. <laughs> yeah, they just they just said, ah, oh, we're just not going to mention it. And we're just not yep. going to talk about it anymore. So this bounty stuff is really funny because he's like, I'll leave Baby Yoda at a public school that I've never seen before. It's like, with with a bounty on it, like, literally pay for a planet <laughs> or some shit. To clarify, if anyone's confused listening to this, we had the bounty for Baby Yoda was converted fully into his suit of armor. And they're saying we could get the suit of armor 10 times over now with the bounty. So it's just like, whoa, they must have as intense. We've talked before about the power of throwaway lines. That is the Negaverse version, the power of a throwaway line to just destroy yeah, like, but so much. Just say, but Karga, I thought he deactivated the fob tracker or the biorhythm signature has, uh, has, has faded or it, it's, yeah. it's not valid anymore or... We've, you know, the signal is delay something. Any, even if it's dumb, something, dumb throwaway well, line. I know, right? But the problem is, if you can deactivate fob tracking, why isn't anyone why didn't else you doing do it, it in the first season? I, again, because I remember, think... in the first season, it wasn't even suggested as a thing that you could do. I, Not I, by anybody. I think we, since we had a season jump, it could have been that he collected a few bounties in between. He's been avoiding other bounty hunters with Baby Yoda. That's like the implication that he got enough money to afford something that's that's rough, which is like, you know, like a black market a rhythm, uh, I don't know, separator, change, manipulate something. something. Yeah, I got to go. We got to go talk to our, our guy who knows how to do this thing. And that guy's a, a tech specialist or something. And you're like, okay, that, that's going to be this episode. Is going to be us. We got to risk it, uh, but we got to go to this place to get this, uh, this a biorhythmic scrambler that Baby Yoda has to wear on him that hides the whatever it is that it's tracking. Come um, up with yeah, something. And, and it could work if it was either really expensive or really rare, because that would answer the question, why aren't any of these other bounty targets doing it? Yeah, and if they just don't have enough money or the resources, that could fit. That could actually work. Three pieces of information in relation to Ahsoka that I find... Mm, one, Baby Yoda has been taught by Jedi Masters at the Jedi Temple for X amount of years. Two, <laughs> here is someone, a place you can take Baby Yoda to eventually result in the possibility that he might be trained. Number three, he shouldn't be trained. She says she's only ever seen one other of his kind, yet there was another Jedi Master of the same species of Yoda. There the was, Yaddle. Yaddle. Maybe Yaddle was like an alien who just looked like Yoda. <laughs> Maybe Yaddle was a shapeshifter. The they have to do that. They have to make a whole movie to explain that Yaddle was a shapeshifter to account for this. Like, it and makes sense. Yoda species is called Yoda species because it doesn't have a name. Mm -hmm. Apparently in this galactic, it, like you could have someone as famous as Yoda and no one knows what the fuck he is. 
Nope. We were trying to put a finger on, like, what exactly is ah Ahsoka about in that episode, and it's mostly just meh. But, like, I find that the, the drama from her and Mando in the episode is about whether or not Baby Yoda can be trained, and she sort of just, like, says stuff until he frees the town, and then she's like, yeah, okay, go train him here, bye. And it's like, oh. Oh, well, hmm. I expected a bit more pushback, because she seemed very passionate about how you shouldn't train him, he's gonna end up like Vader, it's gonna be real bad, real bad, then she's like, but I mean, if you wanna, just go to this stone. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's lame, but alright, we, we've not got enough time <laughs> most of the time, so just gotta go, 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 go. So I thought this was interesting. 5,000 credits, something that Grief Karga offers Bando in episode one. What's your highest bounty? Not much. 5,000? That won't even cover fuel these days. 5,000 um, credits is barely enough for fuel. 1,000 is what he pays the guy on the dock to fix his ship. His substantially damaged ship. I feel like that's a bit... <laughs> I, if you're not going to give a good idea of the value of currency, don't talk specific yes. numbers. Yeah, just don't. Just hand people things. They both know that that's the correct amount. We never find out what it is. It's like, eh, okay. That's what they normally do. He just happens to have the right amount. Oh, here, take this, and it's enough. Oh, you take this, that's enough. Uh, and, and it's just like, okay, I guess that is. Oh, sure, yeah, all right. Not looking to be mean, right? Because I really like Michael Bean, but he's supposed to be a super experienced veteran security guard leader man. And uh, when I was editing, I spotted this is like the last shot of him as he's raised his weapon before he gets shot by Mando, and I, I just thought it was funny. Isn't that a pistol? I guess he's holding it with both hands. That he's, is that him closing oh, yeah. his eyes? <laughs> it, he might be blinking at that one point. <laughs> Um, yeah. it might be... I wouldn't be. I don't know. When I saw this, I was like, it, man, this looks really, like, weird. Like, not how gunslingers operate at all, but... You think that if you were gonna try and pull this maneuver, you'd wanna, I mean, turn to the side to make yourself yeah. smaller while you're raising up the pistol, or you wouldn't do it at all because the guy in front of you is clearly <laughs> impervious to all damage. Also, you have nothing to fight for. <laughs> yep. And you all might as well just reasons. leave. As mm. Boba is wrecking shit in his awesome Boba is awesome moment, you just keep an eye on oh. Mando in the background. He is just awkwardly uh, on one knee, I think. And he's just aiming in the background while we've got like 20 stormtroopers surrounding Boba and doing all kinds of things. Mando just awkwardly fires a shot and then fires another shot. He's not even looking around. He's just like, it comes across as. Um, he had no direction. He was just like, sit over there and look like you're firing the pistol. It's fine. We're focusing on Boba. And it, it just looks amusing as fuck because he hasn't even registered what's happening. Like, you'd think Mando would want to have, check out the knee rockets, right? <laughs> Doesn't he hold it in his hand like he's supposed to shoot his flamethrower, but there's no flames? He looks so disinterested or just unaware of what the fuck's even happening. But that's what happens when you have stuff in the background when you focus in on something else, you know? I thought this was interesting, right? So the, the, we have Mando knows his ship is open. He knows this guy really wants armor, obviously. Um, and then he walks up to him and he's like, my name is Boba, or rather, I think um, the sniper says his name is Boba. And then later he's like, you see, the armor says, belongs to Django Fett, I'm Boba Fett, belongs to me now, foundling, or whatever. He could have already read all of this from the suit, just because he knows how to open it, and just lied. <laughs> and you think Bando would check for himself? You know, who did this armor belong to? What Mandalorian warrior does it should be wearing this? Where do they go? What happened? What's their story? Especially if you're floating through space in between planets and you got some time to kill. If you're stupid enough to leave your ship open and you come down, you're like, oh wow, that, that armor, it definitely must be yours if you've, if you've said your name is that, the name <laughs> is in the armor. It's like, hmm, yeah, I mean, there's no other way that could be justified. I mean, don't have any hope for Mando's intelligence. So. No, we never do. Whatever. And it would have been neat, I think. <laughs> But, like, I don't know why I'm saying this, because Mandalorian is apparently fucking completely unaware of the Clone Wars. Like, he just, he doesn't even know what happened. Yeah, anymore. for, it, it's insane that they don't know what the Clone Wars is. It's the core trauma of his life in season one, and he didn't even look into it. <laughs> like, yeah, because they, because it's in, it's in the Disney canon, the whole Mandalore thing, and the Empire stuff. And the Jedi, and it's established that his sect of uh, Mandalorians is really very traditional, really old school or whatever. But apparently th he knows so little about his own culture. Yeah. You can't get a grasp on what he cares about. And so what I was going to say is I thought it would be cool if he was like, I'm Boba Fett and Boba, uh, Mando could be like, whoa. Or Boba Fett. I feel like a lot of bounty hunters would have heard of Boba Fett, the guy who worked for the Empire. Or Jango Fett, the right hand of Count Dooku in the Clone Wars. That's pretty significant. Yeah, probably mm -hmm. be really, yeah. People would know who that is. And... They would have made Mandalorians a little bit more well-known, I would imagine. But yeah, I don't know. I just think these yeah. would be interesting interactions, but rather it's like Mando is just completely unaware of anything that's happened in history. He's like a blank slate. Everyone is. Yeah, it's true. Like um... they're still trying to do the whole, ooh, what is the Force? Ooh, what are the Jedi? Ooh. 
Who's um, Luke Skywalker? Who's Luke Skywalker? It's the guy that killed the Emperor. <laughs> I don't know who that is. What do you mean? <laughs> no that wouldn't be that. on the news. <laughs> Even though the blowing up of Death Star 2 was broadcast to Tatooine, like, instantly. <laughs> like, the, the, yeah, apparently. apparently the news, yeah, the news network was there. So, yeah, and I guess it's just an obvious, like, why didn't Boba just steal the armor to begin with? Why did you steal it later? I don't know. if Because he clearly considers it his property, you know? Oh, yeah, he wouldn't consider it stealing. Yeah. It's just so funny how it all lines up. He's like, it beats the ball. Because, you know, I think they wanted to have the action moment with him with the stick and then him with the suit, just because that's that's cool. It's all so cool. And so just he beats someone to death, looks up, and he's like, oh, my armor, sweet. <laughs> it's like, wait, why, why? No. Oh, no. Probably thinking, I won't check the ship because no way he left it unlocked and open. <laughs> no, he's I, I better stupid. ask him first. I like the idea that the stormtroopers threw themselves at Mando right up until he used the D rockets. They're like, nah. Nah, we've had <laughs> enough. I mean, this is clearly out of our out of control now. He's got knee rockets. We're done. Who knows what else kind of rockets he got? I feel like we're gonna have a repeat of Hux here. It's like, so why didn't they just shoot them with the first blast instead of his ship that's not moving? And obviously, if they were dead, they wouldn't move it. And I could picture someone being like, well, they get rid of the Razor Crest to, you know, because they're arrogant, maybe. Which is sense. weird. Do you think that those two drop ships for the stormtroopers with the with the four cannons each would have? use those they could probably annihilate his ship too if they were having free fire they could just keep blasting oh away, yeah absolutely know? yeah they would just they destroy <clears> it or they just kill mando and the others while they were walking around on the ground the ship would just fly up and blast them oh yeah and i also raised the question why they didn't shoot uh, what slave one yeah they just oh, don't because they wouldn't dare because disney wouldn't <laughs> fucking dare I, yeah i think at this point disney is like scared to do that kind of thing they were like i don't know people get really angry at us <laughs> Uh, I am I more confident that, that Mando hate... is going to die than Boba Fett. Oh, yeah. <laughs> am I the only one that hates the design of Slave 1? I think it's very wonky and strange, I've and I would, not, I would not want to own that ship. Yeah. Um, I mean, I it might be a subjective thing. Personally. I think people love it because of nostalgia, but it is a dumb design. I hate the thing. Uh, always come across as clunky to me, but I, I, I do, like, the aspect that I just find interesting about it is that, I guess. It's just like, look at that ship. That's yeah. such a strange if, design. Yeah, just imagine every time that you got in and out of your car, it would, like, shift 45 degrees well, yeah, you or have 90 actually, degrees, um, sorry. You have to lie down in your car before you start it up, because that's what Django, that's <laughs> yeah. what they have to do, right? They have to get into it with the back facing yeah. the ground. So you can't, like, put things down. You can't have a dashboard or a cup holder or anything like that, because whenever you park or whenever you take off, that stuff is going to shift 90 degrees. It, it, is, it is a really, really dumb design. It it's very iconic because of that, but um, yeah, it makes absolutely no sense. Yeah, I, I would um, never appeal to functionality. Just to, it looks neat to me. That's that's all I got. I hate it. <laughs> so it, it just in terms of timeline, there's a huge amount of time that the force field is up, and as we mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, it just goes down the very moment that it needs the to not go down. Every moment, lucky. That maybe just got I, uh... <laughs> So yeah, let us jump in. And um, post episode, we'll have a look at some other stuff for the fun. Hey, that's a, that's a weird elephant. Tie fi robot junker thing. Look, it's another shithole. Look, it's old tie fighters. Okay, wait. This should be a shithole, right? Because this is gonna be where Bill Burr <laughs> well, is. Because it's Disney Star Wars. Everywhere is a <laughs> dirty, a, nasty shithole. It's a prisony thing. <laughs> I don't like. What? It's not gonna be nice, probably. Nowhere's gonna be nice. True. Inmate 34667. Ah, what? Please salute Marshal Dune. Oh. I remand prisoner number 34667 to my custody. I guess the New Republic's yeah, like, like yeah. Uh, she has the power to just randomly select a prisoner and use them for whatever she wants. Wow. Three, four, I guess, six, even though that Please she's me. done things that get her life sentences. <laughs> there was me thinking that we were gonna get an action scene in the opening to release him. But no, he's just released. Do it, do it, do it. Inexplicably, we need you. Why does he want to stay here? I know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, surely this is way more interesting. <laughs> oh, he calls oh, it up, huh? us up. You know, for a second, I thought you were this other guy. Oh, there he is, though. <laughs> now there are two of them. Now <laughs> there are two of them. Hey, Phil. Hey, and no. So what you came here was to it? I don't know. All you need to know is I've been a lot of rules to bring you along. 
What? <laughs> Why am I so lucky? Did you? Did you? The robot was alright with it. Yeah. Hey, that was a long time ago, alright? Of all the ex-Imperial people in the galaxy, this is the guy? I mean, it's obvious that it's just because it's Bill Beer, but... Yeah, it's obvious <laughs> because it mm. won't go far back, that's it. I'll, I'll be honest, I like that he's here. I find it... Oh, dude, I like Bill Burr tons. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. it's just amusing to me, I guess, that, like... Yeah, so, by the way, I said that this would happen. His his breakout would just be the opening scene, and that's it. Done. Because fuck <laughs> it. And it's Cara Dune. Like, I don't understand. She became a marshal, and now she can just... Uh, oh. Whatever. A marshal on this one planet, planet it just means she can come here and... Coordinates yeah. from off the ship shit. rotates on the just inside. Back to the scrap okay. You know what you could have done to avoid that? That's an elaborate Just not have to shoot land that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, now that I think about it, it's like if there's a mechanical failure, you can't fly the ship anymore. <laughs> it's a lot of compensation for a ship that doesn't need to do what it does. But here's the thing. I can't get those coordinates unless I have access to an internal Imperial terminal. I believe there's one on Morak. Morak? There's nothing on There's Morak. probably a lot of internal a secret Imperial, Imperial terminals. Okay, yeah, let's get... go to that base. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we blew it go up. Go back Fuck. to that base. It's empty. No, it, did it explode because of lava? Or... I, I, I think so. I think they were talking about how I was going to vaporize all of it. Oh, Man, well, go, go to the hideout then. Get that material, the stuff that you could have. I also right. like, it's just in true Mandalorian form. We need X from you. Well, I'm going to need Y. All right then. <laughs> it's the uh, refinery right there. Highly volatile and explosive. Yeah. Kind of like this one, huh? So we go Why do you think she's volatile? This is what this is all he's ever met of her. And yeah. she's been very calm. Is this a character in universe acting with information that only the audience would be aware of? Guys, the show doesn't have good writing. Hey. <laughs> what are so your jetpacks? Yeah, I'm wondering that. Where, where's the jetpacks? They'll put them on when they're ready. Also, your armor is misaligned. Your costume isn't great. Uh -huh. Well, because these remnant bases are set up and run by XISB. If you get scanned and your genetic signature shows up on any new Republic register, you're going to be detected. And this gun's out. You sure do know a lot about Imperial remnants. Hey, if you want to accuse me of something, then just say well, that's it. That's why he's here. Yeah, that's the whole yeah. reason you hired him. He's here him. because he knows about <laughs> the Empire. <laughs> but won't the alarms right. just, like, so see you? Going. So unless you're going to take off that helmet, it's going to be me going in alone. Oh, say no. a bit uh, the but I won't be showing my face. He's gonna be wearing stormtrooper armor. Yeah. Storm Why do we need there. these helmets to drive this thing? Safety first, Rags. <laughs> Did they not see him? Okay. Did, I guess yeah. Not. yeah. Yeah. They really like that sound cue, don't they? Yeah, they yeah, really yeah. do. What? Oh, well, that was easy. How? Punch him in the head! Wait, yes! how? Why would that be open? What? I, she didn't even push him that hard there at the end. All right. Oh, I guess they're knocked out. Yeah, I guess so. How did they get in? All right. <laughs> it's just open. Yeah. Give her a lot of badass dances, don't they? Oh, oh the shame. I wish I could say it looked good on you, but I'd be lying. Just make sure you take out the rooftop gunners. It's all right. It looks okay. Yeah, as a fine. helmet, it looks pretty good. Is, is the Why do they the... say things that nobody is thinking? Is, is yeah. it just because of the bad guy armor? No, it's because they want us to think it. So everyone in the universe thinks it for no reason. Are they not like curious why uh, that oh, one motivated. car hasn't arrived yet? Yeah, why are you guys like inexplicably uh, late? Yeah, no one contacted them. Also, surely they have buddies who work here who recognize Why didn't you just hold these guys at gunpoint and say, drive us in like normal? or we'll shoot you, yeah. and then once you get to the end, you knock him out. Hey, how's it feel? We get to do buddy cop now, though. Huh? Yeah. Hey, come on, man. You still get to wear a helmet, right? Oh, wait, Mando's lack of character is so entertaining. I can't mm -hmm. see anything. That's what I mean. Bill Burke can rescue us this episode. Why would you wear a helmet with such a small area of vision when you're driving a vehicle like that? Like, don't you need to see to operate that? Why does this is like, we need have, helmets. like, Master Chief helmets with giant visors? Mm. She's here. Yeah. How, how'd she get there? I guess she, she went, went ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Phase one complete. We're in. Copy. Standing by. Phase one complete. I was like, calm down. <laughs> the very official rank. And yeah, I guess like the plan is to break in, get to a terminal, get information, then get out. That's yeah, the I guess. That's what I understand. Okay. All right. Yeah. I am more invested in Bilby's commentary on this shit than Man yeah. at all. Don't worry about the Rhydonium. As long as you drive steady. What now? 
They'll get us to the refinery. I, I think they, they're carrying something explosive. Then why aren't uh. they on fucking hovercraft? Cause it's Star Wars. Exactly. <laughs> oh my god. That would avoid yeah, all the bumps. We have to transport this space nitroglycerin. Quick, get onto the vehicle with the twelve wheels. It's a fucking monster truck. <laughs> How can this possibly be more efficient than hovercraft? Invaders on their land is all we are. We're not going to explore this concept in any way. <laughs> of course not. I'm just, I'm just saying, somewhere, someone in this galaxy is ruling and others are being ruled. Do you really think all those people that died in wars fought by Mandalorians actually had a choice? So how are they any different than the Empire? What a strange thing to start talking about. What a but okay. weird... Yeah, I was like, Look, what a bizarre topic. If you're born on Mandalore, topic. you believe one thing. If you're born on Alderaan, you believe something else. I'm just a realist. I'm a survivor, just like you. You're nothing you like me. You and I are nothing alike. Yeah. I don't know. No. Like you said you couldn't take your helmet off, and now you got a stormtrooper one on. So what's the rule? Is it that you can't okay, take right. off your Mando helmet, or you can't show your face? Because there is a difference. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Accurate. I'm just I'm like, I get to the the spirit of all the Can this be called the Bill Burr Show? Oh, yeah, I was about to say, just have Bill Burr go around the galaxy observing how things. How come this is my shit? It was lasers. Oh, my. Yeah, so you're going to want to stop going in that direction. Oh, yeah. Okay. The Rhydonium is still stable. Did you not see the explosion? Also, the Rhydonium went from green to yellow. It's like, that's concerning. Find another terminal. Why is this the mode of transport? Why? Why are you moving forward still? And why did they not think about any other places? Why was Leave. this the only... Oh, Jesus, here we go. Oh. Look, they have hovercrafts right hovercraft. there. Hovercraft, wow, that looks steady. <laughs> Look, the local pirates have hovercrafts. <laughs> Not the Empire, though. They're retarded. Ah, <laughs> oh, sweet. Action yeah. scene. Let's do it. Sounds like a really common occurrence. Look at all of these. He can't hit anything in a stormtrooper. Oh, no, he <laughs> Oh, no, they ruined it. It's the Are you seriously shooting a blaster near Rhydonium? The ship's not going to blow up because he's shooting the blaster. Yeah. Why can why you, why can you open that? Why could you? Shoot why? Him. What? You can just blow up the town. Oh, my God. Wow. All oh. right. <laughs> oh, they are critical now. Why? Nothing's happened. What? What's <laughs> wrong? Like, Why is this the scenario? Their can clearly go faster than you. It <laughs> doesn't make a difference if you're moving or not. Oh, there's so much about. How did you not see them? How they? <laughs> <laughs> Just don't shoot them. Just shoot yeah. them. Shoot them with your gun. They have sticks. Why? Mando. Why? Shoot them with your Why? gun. Mando. Use your firearm. What are you doing? Shoot them with your firearm. <laughs> getting out of cover. You? you were in cover. You yeah, now shoot the other ones now. <laughs> What? Oh, wow. What? Uh, what? Okay, I guess it broke. We gotta have our fight scene. Maybe he ran out of ammo. He must have run out of ammo. <laughs> no, the wheels are on the side. That wouldn't crush him. Oh, it wow. broke his oh, armor. Broke the armor. <laughs> Pretty sure they actually Guaranteed. just broke his armor with another stick. Yeah. Good so good. ask for Bilbo's gun. Go get Bilbo's gun. These guys are probably shocked that this one Imperial dude is able to kill Pick them Pick it up, all. drive faster. Get, I can't hear you. I, have my hel I don't have my helmet on. Get Bilbo's gun. Mando should have been ready for the change in speed, but all right. Bilbo must have a gun, right? They both did. Go get his gun. They should. I How is that thing faster, faster than the speed? Unstable. I can't believe that. What do you mean, what am I doing, dipshit? Close up! There's four- there's five thugs with sticks. Just kill them. You could they have telegraph the gun all the of their moves, time. and you could just take their weapons from them. Just kill them and be done with it. But rags, these oh, are super please. thugs. They have stick. Did he make a baseball sound? <laughs> well, they're more confident than stormtroopers. I can tell you that. They're probably shocked that this one stormtrooper is able to fight back in any way. Yeah, they're like, "What's happening? Yeah. <laughs> this has never happened before." The other ones just exploded. What is happening? What weapons are these? Like actual sticks? It sticks with. Spear tips? I don't know. They, 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 oh, they their, their pirate off? budget got spent yeah. on the hovercraft. Wait, why did yep. you have to pry it open? The other guy just lifted it. What is happening right now? What? Are... Wait, so their only goal here is to destroy them? They're not plundering at all? Why are you guys not Why do they? Away? Why are they still here? Leave. Oh, that guy's probably glad he gets to live. Re really? Well, okay. Wow. Oh my god. Wow. How stupid is everyone in this universe? <laughs> God damn it. Everyone in this universe is just brain dead. You get the, Out of curiosity, are these raids a common occurrence? Because if so, you'd think you'd figure out better ways of like actually is not having war? this happen. Like having weapons. Look at how many there are. Go get Wait, the other gun. They Go all the have gun. a grenade each that they've all just charged. What the fuck? <laughs> close, close to lit and they can't do shit with it. Like maybe, maybe just throw the grenades from the platforms and not Go jump Go get off. the other gun from Bill Burr. 
They have grenades. Oh, there's the car fighter escort. Them. Oh, okay. Dude, wow, you nearly shot, shot your own guy. Here. Wow, geez, you closer. Oh my oh goodness. My yeah. They actually managed Fucking to hell. affect something, though. I can't believe so it. I'm proud of you. The one time the Imperials are capable of anything, it's just in the nick of just time. Save, to save the save heroes. Man, to save yeah. the heroes, the stormtroopers could actually wow. shoot. Hitting Look at people. this! They didn't what? miss! Wow. They didn't miss! They didn't even How? miss! <laughs> wow. 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 Miss. There wasn't a single missed shot. Oh my wow. god. Wow, only they were that good all the time. Been. What the fuck? I like how the best soldiers are the ones just guarding some refinery <laughs> in the middle of the <laughs> strike teams trying to retrieve With like baby Yoda and everything. Yeah, fuck yeah. It. Oh my god, I love the we'll fact the that they're all super competent when defending our heroes. That's so funny. And yeah, about Wait the a whole second, you're not Jim. <laughs> <laughs> About the whole common occurrence thing, it's like, yeah, you'd think they'd have accompanying ships. You'd think they'd have or, or a more weapons. Or on the back of these vehicles. Mahler, I'm having Holy the feeling. Shit, look how many I'm having the are. feeling oh, no. that, that, like, of, of getting something from the Imperials' perspective. Yeah, I think that's something we could explore. Uh, having a feeling of an idea. Oh my god. Well, I mean, we got a half episode left. Who knows what we're doing? Remember, Bill Burr said, like, it's just where two. you're born, you know? Like, a lot of what you believe is where you're from. I mean, I'm up for an episode that tries to portray the Empire as good guys. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Look at him! We're so Does glad you're alive. Recognize? We care about each other here. I will say, oh. this seems unusual, but if if, 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 if we want to, like, I'm, I'm cool with this. I'm cool with this, too. Like, yeah, guys, you made it back. It just comes good out job. of nowhere. That's the weirdness of yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> but Mando exploring a cool idea? Whoa. What if he had to do a bounty and he had to pose as an Imperial for, like, an episode or two yeah. or three or a season and he learns about Z? I better stop. I better stop. I better stop. <laughs> Everyone's carrying around their gun because right. they, they don't have holsters. Well, don't look at them. That's what? weird. Wow, that was oh, majorly suspicious. Felon has. I used to serve under him. Will he recognize you? Oh, so he's already seen you. He, he's, yeah, okay. he's just looking so, at your face. Not only is that incredibly unlikely, considering everything, but it's too late. Oh, no, put your helmet on. 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 Go get your helmet. Put it on. If we don't get those Go put your helmet on. I'll lose the kid forever. Yeah, Go put your helmet on. Go get your helmet. Go get your helmet. Get your helmet. Yeah. It's in the truck. Go get it. Just get your helmet! <laughs> They're having this conversation in front of his field of view. To access the network. Terminal has to scan your face. Okay, okay. So, so take the helmet off once Let's you get to the terminal. Take the helmet off there and then put it back on afterwards. Yeah, easy. Wait, Mando's doing it? So Mando didn't tell him to just go get his helmet? Do you understand how Don't suspicious it is that someone that walked into the room, walked back out, just provided go. a piece of thing to someone else oh, who then walked job, in? Good job, you guys. Jesus Christ. Look at them, they're all looking at you. The, the terminal's in the cafeteria? Oh wait, this has to scan your face, right? So Yeah, is it facial recognition? I don't understand why it why scans your face. Why would but why would it work on Mando? Why are you looking- why are you him? being the most suspicious motherfucker that exists? Oh, okay. He just broke the code! How is that not incredibly suspicious? Also, why would the facial scanner work on him? I don't understand. Wait a uh, second, you're not with us. Why would- what? why would that- What? So it's a facial scanner that just requires a face? What? That's it? Like, it's just- it's just- the Also, so this is just data you could download? I die. what the fuck? Like, this I'm gonna like go a... to the cafeteria yeah. for some bagels and some blue <laughs> and milk some and also to- secret schematics. Trooper, why I'm, are you I'm, fucking weird? I'm honestly proud of the show for having him realize this is incredibly strange. Yeah. Hey, Trooper. Oh, it's- dude, that's the guy from Doom. He's the Bad weird- the sex period. one. We don't know what we're dealing with here. It's SOP to call we in. We are the reinforcements. What's your TK number? This is my commanding officer, TK-593, sir. I'm Imperial Combat Assault Transport Lieutenant TK-111, sir. Come on, let's go fill out those TPS reports so we can go recharge the power coils. You're not dismissed. I, I, I like to think that all stormtroopers are actually like that. I want that show, man. All around like one stormtrooper in his life. Yeah, yeah. He's just doing his job, I mean, thinking he's doing the right thing, the paying the bills. Imagine yeah. they did that in the sequel trilogy. Yeah. Yes, sir. You're the tank troopers who delivered the shipment of Redonium. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Where'd you learn how to fight like that? Because we didn't fucking teach you that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you two managed to be the only transport today to deliver their shipment. What? The only What? One. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what? Why is it that every drink in this universe is blue? 
I, I can't believe that they're the only transport that made it in today. What? what? No, no wonder all their friends were happy. Like, yeah, at least Jim and Carl Should made it. <laughs> but they look a little no, different. Not Jim and Carl. Their, their anti-aircraft sites are from the 40s. How, how about they, like... I think they took, like, an M14 for Phoenix Rifle and just dressed it up for the props. Look, it's, it's light blue. blue. It's, it's light blue. Ah, uh, it, it is. It is. It's like Gatorade. Like, what is the Blue Frost or whatever. Right. We're classy here. We don't have that luminescent blue brown that all the others have. Yeah. How about a toast to Operation Cinder? Now there's a man who knows his history. There's Why a man who knows his history? That? How does any of you not know what Operation How's Cinder is? Con? Everyone yeah. in the Empire should know what Operation Cinder that was is. A hard day. Yeah, everybody would know what that is, I that's for sure. Make. Phil Burr isn't worried about yes, anyone did. recognizing him now? Nope. I guess not. I Don't give him too much info. He'll recognize you. He lost our whole division that day. Man, I was like five, ten thousand people. Yep. All dead. Why are you doing That's this? A small sacrifice for Dude, the don't pick a fight. Like, what are you like, doing? Stop, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm supposed to be the stupid one here. Why Stop are you it. doing this? Well, it's a small sacrifice for the greater good, son. Depends on who you ask, don't you think? Why are you people? doing this? How come you turned into an fight? idiot? <laughs> I guess he's just pissed. Their families? Yeah. The guys yes. I served with? I guess I can only but hey, for one he's, more he's talking about that. They got families and stuff. But Phil Durr brought this up. Died defending their homes. Was it good for him? Why would you... Oh. The new republic is in complete disarray, and we grow stronger. don't need to tell me that. <laughs> Western <laughs> movie did they pull this guy from? Boys. Everybody thinks they want freedom, but what they really want is order. <sighs> to the Empire. <laughs> what wow. the- Wow! Okay. <laughs> wow! <laughs> What? What? What the fuck? Uh... <laughs> what was everyone else doing in this cafeteria? Just they all had guns. I can't believe this. Are you serious? They're done. Oh, okay. There's all the people. Y'all enjoy. I'll. I'm. I'm done. I'm just so done. <laughs> I. I'll. I'll catch y'all later. Enjoy the Mandalorian season two. <laughs> they just kicked the fucking one. <laughs> Oh no! 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 What the? What? I'm I'm in sh I can't, I, I'm shocked. This is unbelievable. They just kicked the window open. Man. <laughs> what? what? They're on the other side. They'd be screwed. How They've always got to find a way to have some stupid action scene happen in this show. Whatever excuse they need. What? The Kicked it open, just shot him. Um, I can't believe they they just spontaneously decided to kill everyone there and leave through the window. It's just like okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't even be bothered to comment on how like how they're getting so lucky here as well. I. Uh... All of it. It's all garbage. Uh, uh, God. Here, come, here comes our boy Boba. Do something cool, Boba. How inconvenient! He's <laughs> rotates to even let people on. <laughs> Is it bad that I'm just like, oh, Bill Burr, please just keep him on, just keep him on. Yeah. I don't really fucking care, just keep him with the whole show. Is he gonna blow up the facility? This is no, his moment for you. Just one shot. Oh, oh, What? Oh. <laughs> what? Okay, okay. Oh, oh, that's oh, the thing. No. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh no, okay. No, oh, no. I can't resist blowing things up. Bill Burr's got in more characterization now than Mando's and gotten in the entire yeah, of the yeah. show. He has an arc already. Dude, seismic he charge. Do something. a seismic charge. Like do a seismic charge. Yeah. Do it. Go on, you know you want to show. Do it. Yeah. There it is. Oh, I can listen. listen. They did the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Boba Fett. <laughs> you remember oh. in episode two when they did the thing? They did it again. You remember oh. in episode two when they did the thing? They did it again. Oh, you gotta be specific now. Cl no, no, Attack right. of the clones is what I meant by that. Well, looks like it's back to the scrap heap. Thank you for helping. He did the one good thing. Yeah, good luck getting your kid back. Gosh. All right, officer. Dude. Take me back. Was he this character in season that one? That was some nice shooting back there. Oh, no, he was that. a lot more of a scoundrel yeah, in season one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, way more of a scumbag. Me, I was never really into pets. Yeah, I didn't have the temperament. Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> Make sure you clean up your mess. If you let us go about our job, you can walk away with your life. No, we won't. Hey. Tax on the way. He's already dead meat. Let's go. Oh, and it's bad all this way. We're not killing anybody, you understand? Get that blaster out of my face, Mando. I'll see to it. You get triple share. Just get him. You better be good for it. Well, looks like it's back to the scrap heap. Good luck getting your kid back. All right, officer. Take me back. Get that blaster out of my face, Mando! And like, I'm cool with him being an anti-hero kind of dude. Like, that would, I, I just want, I want more Bill Burr's Star Wars too show. Bad, yeah. <laughs> too bad. Oh, they're gonna pretend he died there. So you're in super amount of trouble then. You stole a prisoner and killed them. Well, he needs a lift, guys. No, don't. Yeah. This is no, 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 you had it. You were so close. Just let him join the team. Yeah. Ah, uh, Bill Burr doesn't have the time for that. He's I don't care, make him. He's like the best thing make about him. the show right now. Yeah. How's he gonna get home? Like, he's just on some red planet. Aw, oh, man. Yabo. <laughs> what? He's oh, like, oh. How can you just leave him here? <laughs> yeah, surely give him a lift. <laughs> yeah. like, what is he gonna do here? This is just some weird planet that has an empire base exploded on it. What's he gonna do? I guess hang out with the villagers. You have hey, something hi, I want. Oh my god. Could they have picked a less intimidating <laughs> actor not. to fill this role? This he looks like an accountant with a stick of up his butt. Will be back They're doing me. Taken right now. <laughs> I find it funny that someone in the Empire like watches that, they're like, who the fuck is this guy? Who cares? Yeah. Just some random Mandalorian dude. Oh, we've set up for Start. that finale now, huh? Yeah. Uh-huh. So, where, where's that one sit? <laughs> Somewhere in the middle, I would say. So, Personally, I'd say yeah. this is an example of it might have some of my like favorite stuff in this season is in this episode, but there's mm -hmm. incredibly stupid shit as well. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. again, but, stupid but, fighting. Because Bill Burr stuff's really cool, but like they're still. Yeah. I did enjoy it. I, I found it a lot of fun. There, there were some really dumb things, like like well, I mean, that I, facial I was... recognition thing. That was a. Down to me, though. <laughs> well, and just that entire final sequence there. Like, what what were they thinking? I uh, I, I find as well that the stuff that I like is still a little half baked because mm. I think we rushed Bill Burr's arc. Oh, we could have had a whole season on Bill Burr's arc. Yeah. Really. How testy he is about being careful to then be like, I'm gonna blast everyone away in this room, which which is adjacent to a room filled with troopers. It's like, uh. <laughs> Fascinating so, choice. I kind of like that, you know, he could get that angry that he just like, screw it. Uh, so that part I kind of like, but it's interesting because in the truck when they were driving there, his character was almost like trying to justify, was he trying to justify the Empire? So he's like, everyone, kind of it's all bad. Really? I hate Empire. I'll kill you no matter what kind of thing. I think that it, it doesn't quite work the way that we would have uh, been praising it for if it did. Like in terms of he's... We're all appreciating some of these comments, but just like only in isolation, I think, because like, oh, so the challenge now is to make it through this drink session, which is kind of reminiscent of like Inglorious Bastards sort of things. Like, oh, this will be cool. But he just immediately <laughs> starts antagonizing him. And it's like, they're doing that to create a payoff that's kind of neat in isolation, but it doesn't match this scene, I don't think. Like Bill Burr should immediately just be like capitulating to the to the officer, be like, oh yeah, man, you do a great job around here. I love working for you guys. And if you want, I think you try and turn the scene slowly with him getting triggered by different personal things but he kind of brought it up himself you know he's just like operation cinder went really bad for for a lot of people and you don't even care do yeah. you it's like wait why did you say all of that <laughs> why would you do that i guess he's got a grudge like that's what i mean I, I think it would be better if like it you know what would be cool is if the the officer was actually providing like uh alternative lines to bill Burr that bill Burr provided to mando not just a scene ago you know and that then been and bill Burr like slowly realizes like this is bullshit yeah there's something there, I think, and it makes me really like the fact that Bill Burr was given a character. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. But holy shit, all of this episode, like, plot-wise. I went on a rant in my last video about how dumb Imperial Walkers are when they have hover technology, right? And uh -huh. it's the exact same thing with those cars, what we were saying. It's like, why would you use unstable, bumpy, you know, wheels, cars, with unstable fuel that needs a smooth ride? That's just... That's amazing in terms of a world building stupidity. It's just like, oh, oh my God. And yeah, so because it's only like, you know, just under 40 minutes, so you can really just summarize this as we need to get to the cruiser from last episode. In order to get to the cruiser, we need Bill Beer and another item. And that's this episode. So it does fit the, the formula. Mm -hmm. And the plot line then for two seasons will be he was sent to get a bounty, he decided to rescue the bounty from death. The bounty was then kidnapped and he got the bounty back. 
because I'm assuming he will by the end of the season. And that is the plotline Six for the whole season. Sixteen episodes, yeah. yeah. Wow. With bits and bobs being added here and there, I don't think they've done anywhere near enough world building to justify that little of plot. Really? The, the only episodes that haven't been filler have been, like, these last two, frankly. I feel yeah. like even the Ahsoka one was kind of filler. Kind of. It's in the weird middle ground where, like, the actual plot of that episode doesn't have anything to do with the broader story, but, like, there was important stuff moving things forward, but that's it. Well, we're one, at the two, point. three, and four are, uh, filler. I'd say we're at the point where we're trying to sort of say, like, it's not filler if they introduce a new important character, right? It's like, I guess. Yeah. Like, that's I all guess, that really I mean. happens. It's just amazing to me because it's like, it's been so long while watching Mando that I've had a, a dose of, like, characters thinking about something and making decisions based things. on it yeah like it's just like whoa know, right? that felt like a you know an ocean in a desert sort of situation yeah because like because i mean what we saw there was the potential of hey maybe we're going to explore there's dip you know the empire is there's people in it and i mean you know bill burr said it himself like the people that he worked with who died had families and they had lives and it's like man just there's an angle here like you could yeah, you yeah. could there's so much filler in this show yet they've wasted so, like they've rushed so many things it's insane it's kind of i, I kind of can't believe it well and, and i think this is what the show benefits from is that it it just toys with those things and then everyone will do but the rest of the work them. like the viewers yeah. will do the rest of the work they'll be like it's so fucking awesome that mando explores like stormtroopers as entities that aren't just pure evil it didn't really it just it it's just it plays lit service to that idea like i uh, you know yeah. like people would say about tfa with finn it's like well no they didn't really like th that's not really what happened they just kind of pretended to they're not putting in the actual work they to do all of this yeah they certainly could have done it better that's for, it, it's so squandered man and you have cara dune i'm trying to think of like how this even happened so she was with uh grief Karga, and she was like um she said if everyone was to check her history she could probably go to jail so she helps him rebuild this town the republic come by and she signs up to become a marshal and she's successful yeah, no and this gives her the ability to go to prison camps and just abduct prisoners yeah I'm I mean, very confused how this works it, it, it seems consistent with how incompetent the new republic is <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah. new republic is highly incompetent yeah i'm, I'm glad it's that fascinating it out. absolutely fascinated that like and of course he's now dead i don't know if she'll re receive any repercussions for this she said that she broke rules to get him out of there it's like you killed uh, him yeah, you think the new republic would be like wait so you took a soldier for a, you took a prisoner for a mission and they died that's like that's bad you that's do really, realize like, that I right feel like that's, that's jailable surely uh, surely it yeah. is yeah and sort of possibly yeah one thing that kind of stood out to me but it's oddly again consistent with the empire being profoundly incompetent that they would leave a highly volatile substance in a secure base just on the roof that you anyone who walks on top of a mountain can shoot at and blow up the entire friggin' base which like, to echo the issue there Bilbid just established that all of these soldiers can have families and getting killed arbitrarily and he blows up the base like cool just because he has a grudge yeah, yeah. it kind of lessens his whole speech huh but his oh. empire bad now because of the, the guy he's like, well the thing I mean. is is like i'm cool i'm cool with them working towards like some kind of thing of oh he believes in something now it's like maybe more than one episode would be good absolutely well, yeah because i actually kind of like you know that I idea like him that he just, i like he it ordinarily I'm... hates the empire and he just can't control himself and honestly i will say i think i like him more than i than he's well written like i i i just like oh, Bill i like the things he said <laughs> i feel like with a yeah. lack of it in the rest of the season that i'm liking him more than i probably would in isolation should... but my god you finally have something show don't let it go <laughs> like, please that's that's that'll be the only no, episode is in, in this season i bet well dude like... they've announced like 50 spin-off shows just have burr a star wars story or something <laughs> <laughs> bill burr going on adventures across the galaxy making observations about things don't mean to be rude but boba fett is an action figure and that's all he's gonna be in these episodes probably like look he's then boba there, swoops yeah. in and he, you remember the size of child he does that he also says like beginning phase two uh, yeah, he didn't yeah. Episode, did he? As, as a character is like we're gonna protect the baby because we said we'd protect the baby and I'm like mm, okay okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah again because mando for some reason ha is allergic to action scenes it cannot do them properly ever i feel like at this point that the average human being could choreograph better action scenes just by being like he fired four shots and then it ran out of ammo or jammed i don't know you're like really oh, we're doing that oh, oh. yeah they're so 
What do you reckon? Out of ammo or jam? I think either, either one of them is not justified. If Let's go with jam. It's like, I don't think we've ever seen this in Star Wars before, and it's incredibly uh, unlikely by judging from that, just, just like average numbers. And so it's just mm -hmm. like, yeah, incredibly unlucky on Mando's part. So it's a extreme coincidence. But I think, I think it would be with, why would they be carrying pistols that ha only have four shots left? You'd think that they would be aware of their ammo. They've just begun this. This is the beginning of their, um, you know, job for securing all these important materials. They are about to begin the convoy. And it's like, you take your weapon that's almost out of ammo. It's like, that's strange. It's like, okay, that gun's not working. Hey, Bill Burr, throw me another gun. By the way, yeah, Rags was like, rage quit, I guess. <laughs> You, we could definitely call it that. He ran out of time, but I just like the idea that as soon as this the thing happened in the cafeteria, he's like, okay, I'm out. See you guys. Yeah, it was, a, was good timing. It was good timing, definitely. You know what? I'll probably record watching the rest of the episode once he's back with him, and that'll just be the uh, the stinger for this episode. Rags reacting to the rest well, of the episode or something else. What impact is it going to have on on Mandalorian Mando that he took off his helmet in front of people. Is there uh, nothing, nothing, nothing at all. Nothing at all. Um, yeah. And this is the thing, no, you just... could make some kind of an arc here about how he's learning that that's just, that's not the important part of your life. Like, making sure you stick to this arbitrary creed or something. If they wanted to do that. But like, I guess that was what they were going for, right? But like, is that... You know? Well, with Bill Burr's commentary on it as well, yeah, but, but at the same time, it's like, but he has been doing this his whole life. This is incredibly important to him, so you need to really, like, justify his, like, if that he's gonna big. have an That was a huge thing, and it should have a fairly strong impact, and at least, if they were doing it so. right, there would have to be a follow-up for him to address this as a character for what he just did, because it's been such a crutch for him so far. He was almost willing to die in the first season to take off his helmet in front of a robot. Yep. Like, yeah. that's that's a huge, you know, leap in terms of the... And like, that's what I think they... I think they're going for, yeah, he made that sacrifice because this is all in aid of Stadium Baby Yoda. And I'd be like, I think you need a more direct example of that to have that scene. Like, <sighs> it's so contrived. I'm sorry. Because you know what I just thought in my head? A scene where Baby Yoda is going to be like thrown into lava unless he shows his face. It's like, that's the first thought I had. It's like, okay, so that needs a lot of work. And I'm like, then again, they just have a face scatter in this episode for some reason. That's why he has <laughs> yeah, to this, take the helmet off. It's but, just, it's just, just scan face. It's not even a, yeah. like a security thing. Just scan. Just scans a face. It's so stupid. <laughs> and what is what? And you know why they put it in now? So it'd have to take off his mask. It's just for me, it's like, oh god, it's so naked. Like there's no barrier between us and the script. It's like, oh, there you are. I see you. <laughs> How you doing there? <laughs> And these people, I guess they only attacked this day, and they attacked every single transport, and the, the Empire, despite previous transports getting exploded, didn't care to start, like, securing the area with several TIE yeah. fighters, just, you know, keeping an eye on it. Just, just have a TIE fighter fly along with it as a security escort. Problem solved, you know? And I was wondering, like, when I was thinking that, when they're actually getting attacked, well, maybe they don't have TIE fighters here, then yeah. of course when they get the face, oh, look! I fought this! How useful! <laughs> and this idea that moving fast in this vehicle will possibly detonate your entire truck. You're like, wow. <laughs> Why, <laughs> Why would you be doing it like this? <laughs> Just yeah. weird that they don't have... Why are they I'm, on I'm wheels? Sad. Like... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, wheeled vehicles and walkers are utterly ridiculous in the Star Wars universe with the technology that they have freely available. And uh, I can't, like, there's no good logical reason to justify them using such low-tech oh. things over over hovertech when they've shown hovertech being so efficient that it's like, they park their hover things and they're still hovering. That's how efficient this technology yeah, is. And the, how yeah, little power consumption it. is used. Like, yeah, we're even if we would say, oh, maybe they don't have that big of transportation devices, I would go multiple trips rather than unstable Period. that explode. They're sitting there going, oh no, we've revealed ourselves out the window. That's just what you do. And the window, conveniently on the same side as where the snipers are covering. And conveniently able to be broken open, even though this is a very yeah. important base. You, with a kick, kick, no less. Once. One <laughs> kick. What a good synchronized kick, by the way. That's yeah, yeah. Good. Fascinating stuff. And yeah, they're just getting incredibly lucky, as per usual, with all the stormtroopers missing. Except that I want to see that again. That's so funny when the stormtroopers wipe out every single enemy, all with one shot each. I'm curious to see if there is even one stray blaster bolt that doesn't actually hit an enemy. Okay, so I'm just playing it here. It's like, yeah, hit, 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 hit. <laughs> also, that's neat. 
I just spotted one of them throws a grenade. It bounces real close. It's about a meter and a half away from a stormtrooper. And they cut away. <laughs> like, <laughs> really? Yeah, he's like at the front of the line, and one of them he gets shot before he can throw his grenade. But it rolls forward, and it's like it's definitely close enough that it would do something. It's like, okay, it's fine. Kind of just memeing that that would be a thing that they would they would bag God. But apparently, they they are aware that people really like the sound of the seismic charges for Attack of the Clones. That's that's a thing. I know it. I've seen lots of people talk about it. They're cool just for the sound effects, so they banked on it. They're gonna pretend that Bill Bird dies, and he'll come back in season three, I guess, for an episode. No more. And then they're gonna arrive at uh, Gus's ship. They're gonna go corridor to corridor, shooting everybody until they get to a boss room. Mando's like, "You guys get the baby. I'll defeat Gideon." And he gets his uh, his spear, and he fights Gideon's dark saber. It's gonna be fucking epic. Clearly, <laughs> oh man. So, what are your guys' thoughts on Moff Gideon? Because nothing against the actor, I'm sure there are many roles that he can fill really well, but to me, yes, Gus. does not fit that role at all. He's not doing anything. I just, I, yeah, <laughs> I just don't. It's just yeah. look at me. I am bad, dark cyber boy. Dark cyber. Like, it's like having an account <laughs> villain for me, and it's just like, sorry, old guy, you're just not fitting the role. Just, maybe he needs a helmet. Yeah, um, I'm hoping that the, the, they would give him more characterization and history and stuff, but I actually think he might die in the next episode. There's a good chance. Because uh, he's, like, filling in for bad guy until bad guy arrives. Thrawn will, uh... Well, I, I guess that's gonna be her villain when the Ahsoka series eventually um, well, comes he could out. Be, what if he's both, right? I don't know. Like, the, the, maybe he'll <laughs> he'll be introduced in Mando and then he'll become Ahsoka's, like, she'll kill him at the end of her series or something. And then we'll get Crisis on Infinite Star Wars. -es. She has the lightsaber <laughs> through Thrawn's chest and Thrawn looks at her and he's like, you have no idea what you've done. Much like I said would happen when Mando kills Gideon because there's always more. That's the meme. There's always more. You kill Snoke and he'll be like, you don't even know. Palpatine's yeah. alive! And then you kill Palpatine, Palpatine's like, whoa, you don't know. <laughs> Why is there always more of people? Plagueis arrives! Dun, dun, dun. There's a few more comments I have. A little bit more discussion, you know? Which works, because, you know, Shad, you haven't been with us for this whole journey. So I you know, can I know. Just jump in here be. and there. There are times when a show has bad things in it, but then there are times a show that has such an astoundingly dumb thing that it just sticks with me and I can't get it out of my head. Because that face scanning thing. <laughs> well, it was so stupid probably worth asking then like how do you rank this one this episode you just saw how, how... honestly i actually enjoyed this one probably the most uh, it's probably bill burr that did it and um, it was just it was just fun it was uh overall even though they're like there are some really stupid things I did enjoy it. I like it. It's just fun, guilty, pleasure. Completely and the agree production with you. Was so yeah. good. So I guess if I was There's to rank it like bad. consistency, pretty bad. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's oh yeah, bad. they all are. So <laughs> yeah, I, it's like I'm trying to think of like it's not as bad as episode six, right? We were okay with that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. cool with saying it. Okay. episode six was a disaster. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so what is the next competition? It's like I think. Is it better than episode one? Or is it about... I'd say it's on par with episode one, probably, in terms of just like, the amount of things that don't make any sense. Maybe worse, though, because yeah. that face scanner really is dumb. Uh, yeah, but... Yeah. The, yeah. But there was more There was more fun characterization because of Burr in this one. And they relied on our knowledge of his history to make something out of his character. Like, there's, there's, work, there's writing happening in this episode. There was writing of some kind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best you're ever going to get for Battlelord, right? It's like, they, they offer yeah. you, like, hey, here's something you'll really like. Like, ooh, it's like, I'm going to cake it in stupid, though. And you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just have to cake without the stupid, please? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a feeling the finale is going to be really bad. Because there's going to be lots of things happening, lots of action, lots of big decisions, and they're all going to be like things that we were sitting there like, what? Just get an episode of character building. I mean, not in the finale, obviously, but it's always just action, stormtroopers, pew pew pew, look, we're stupid stormtroopers, ah, we kill ourselves, pew pew pew. No, they, they <laughs> annihilated Seismic all those. charge. The pirate dudes, they fucking fucked them up, they didn't miss a shot, Mel, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, I don't know how that happened because those pirates were more more competent than all the other stormtroopers in the season so far. This is like the basic discussion of power levels, and I know that like normal viewers will be like, "What are you talking about with all this stuff?" It's just like, yeah, I I know that a lot of people don't even pay it, but like rock paper scissors style shit or just consistent action from. I don't have stakes if I don't believe and understand the power of the people involved. Although I'm just sitting here yeah. confused. To go back to uh, episode six, it was funny that Mando had the high ground on the hill, 
the best armor to cover himself, obviously. <laughs> Weaponry, uh, a pure sight on the enemy. Like, he literally sees them moving around clearly with his, uh, I guess, the heat vision of the visor. He's got a force field on Yoda, Baby Yoda that's behind him, so that's better protection than Baby Yoda's ever had. And he's like, yeah. I'm gonna go right down to them and walk up to them personally. It's like, I had him. That's insane. <laughs> you no, have... Boba Fett with wearing rags in a desert with a fucking caveman baseball bat, essentially, and he manages to fashion a fully functioning digestive system in robotic form that is then accepted by and saves a corpse in the middle of like a backwater planet. It's, it's like that kind of shit. I honestly think most people would be like, eh, whatever, Star Wars. And I'd be like, no, that's major. That's, that's yeah, that, that, even in the Star Wars universe. That's I fucking mean, insane. Think about when Vader's life was saved, right? He was in this full big medical facility with all this really high tech equipment and droids working on it and everything to attach these things. When Luke got his arm, he needed to be in a proper medical facility. Yeah, to and do neither it. of them had and organs replaced. <laughs> Because <laughs> that is saying, mm. like, a, a point blank blaster shot into your internal organs, <laughs> you can survive that. That's amazing. As long as some dude with a stick shows up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank goodness. I saw someone point out um, how come they have electric cyanide pill things, but they don't have a self destruct for the ship? Like, they're prepared to down the ship and destroy it if anyone was to be able to catch it as well as kill themselves but there's no ability for the ship itself to prevent itself from being captured it, like an ultimate switch sort of mm. feels like if they oh, were it would ruin the whole thing yeah there's nothing to add yeah it's true <laughs> yeah no it, it's sad it's just like yeah that's, that's dumb it's, it's a question though like do ships have self-destruct in star wars because i don't think we've ever seen one self-destruct would that not just be commentary on like something they probably should have figured out by now i i yeah i would say so yeah it like, is an interesting thought you're right, I don't actually think we've ever seen a ship self-destruct in, uh, in, not in the sense of a button that self-destructs like we've seen Kamikaze, thankfully, TLJ, legend. <laughs> <laughs> this is a thought that I, I can't remember if we talked about it more thoroughly in, in uh, the stream we did for season one, but I do want to bring this back up. You know, um, literally episode one, IG-11 is like, I've been sent to kill the baby, and then Mando is like, no, we can take it in alive, and he's like, nope, I have to kill it. Was IG-11 hired by the Empire? Because, or like, in that form of bounty, because that doesn't make any sense. Like, they desperately want this kid alive. They want its blood. A lot of the other bounty hunters seem to be perfectly fine to kill it, and that was their first priority. The guy on, you know, you found him on the uh, water, backwater planet. Was yeah. Try to kill him. Yeah, they were treating it like the kind of bounty you expect in, you know, like in Joker, where it's like, uh, I'll, I'll, half a million for his corpse, a million alive so I can teach him some manners. For, like, the idea is Gamble wants the Joker dead, but he's happy to torture him. And that's how they like you that's like the basic expectation for bounties when everyone thinks about them in, especially in star wars you'd be like oh it's probably some contract because you want a person dead but this is entirely not that at all this is kidnapping they desperately want the person there is no element of wanting it dead from what i could tell i have a comptoner of beskar waiting for you upon delivery of the asset alive yes alive and yet um a lot of bounty hunters are trying to kill it. Do you remember in episode two when he's um, ambushed? One of them gives up fighting Mando to try and kill Baby Yoda with his, his like axe or whatever. He runs up to Baby Yoda's like, I gotta fucking kill you. Even if Mando will kill me, as long as I kill you, I feel satisfied. It's like, wow. <laughs> You're really into this. It, with season two as well, like all the context they've added, who wants Baby Yoda dead and why? Because imagine killing Baby Yoda and transporting him all the way to the Empire. I feel like his blood would be useless by then. Yeah, very <laughs> odd. Like, I'm thinking about it, it's like, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't got any. I saw I someone tried. bring this up in our episode 4 coverage, and I think it's kind of interesting. So, if the goal at the base, when the, the one they blew up in episode 4, if the goal was to delete information to prevent people like Mando or whoever else finding out what they're up to, quote-unquote, to the point where they will send stormtroopers out to try and kill them, because I would imagine they've seen too much would be the argument there. Like, we gotta kill them now, because they've seen what we're doing at this base, probably. When do they ever that show... Kind of confuse me just on a side is like they had a secure facility on that planet so why the hell are the stormtroopers in episode one hunkering down in a bunker it's like a base would be useful i've seen people talk about like how if the base existed why didn't they take baby Yoda straight there after the deal was done in season one i think that's fair to i think there's wiggle room because you could be like why wait 
we can start doing it here. And they had no reason to think that Mando was going to attack them. I'm just surprised they would have the facilities to do all the testing in a, in, why would they even set it up in a basement when they had a full base with all the stuff there ready to go? Why would they do any of that, to be honest with you? Why wouldn't it just be that they set up there to get Baby Yoda and as soon as they're successful, they would move him to like, you know, a ship with all this stuff? Navarro mm. is this desolate planet that's occupied by some random people. Like, why would you want to set up an Empire base there? Well, question, is it secret? Because the locals seem to have known where that base was the entire time. It's like... Yeah. Because to me, it feels like when they did season one, the base obviously didn't exist in the writer's head. That's why they're no, in, the, in no. the basement. And then they want a base in season two, which stuffs up their reasoning and, you know, for having the Empire in the basement in season one. It's like consistency, you know? They're not a fan of that. Since when uh, the show cared about that, yeah. And yeah, I, I guess I wanted to highlight, if we conclude with best faith that the reason they were trying to kill them in episode 4 after they've left is because they've seen too much, it's like, why would the Empire not take any more opportunities to kill them, especially in episode 6 when they could blast them from the sky? My brain is desperate at some points, like, why would they not shoot Boba Fett? It's like, maybe they don't want to kill Boba Fett, and it's like, but he fucking annihilated a bunch of stormtroopers, like, why... <laughs> I can't deal with this. Like, it's impossible. It's so hard to write this for them. It's like, there's just no way. Too stupid. Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. There's and a, you'd think as well, lot. after everything that happened on Navarro, that they would have moved all of this shit out of there ages ago. Like, why would you have the bases just still chilling out there after everything that happened? And it looked like there was still important stuff there. Like... I guess they were working with Baby Yoda's blood. They only recently ran out, right? He said the transmission was three days earlier that they had said they ran out of samples. I'm really interested to find out what they need from this Baby Yoda blood. Like They're injecting it into people while trying to create clones of it to make Force-using soldiers or something? That's my assumption? Well, I don't know. That's the thing, right? Uh, first it was implied that the Force was just inherent with this race, with Baby Yoda, and that that could be something that was special about this race. But now they've established that, no, uh, Grogo was trained to use the Force. And so, okay, what's right. special about the race? Then? Why do they need Baby Yoda? So I'm, <laughs> I'm interested in that when this is finally revealed as to what they're trying to do, very interested because I feel it's not going to make sense. Also, I'm really curious if the Dark Troopers are going to be super effective or not. I'm curious if we're going to see, like... Because they're going to get brought out in the final episode of Mando to Battle, and I'm curious if it's going to be one shot to the head, or if it's going to be some kind of environmental kill, because they're so powerful. Depending on their power levels, and we're like, why didn't you bring them in any other fight? <laughs> like... <laughs> So it's bad both ways, I think, because if they're worthless, I'll just be like, eh, great. But if they're not worthless, it'll be annoying. It's a bit of a... Because, yeah, like, first I was thinking Dark Troopers might be these genetically enhanced clones that took a lot of work to produce. But when I saw that they were just robots, I was like, oh, can't you just make robots whenever you yeah, want? Yeah, haven't we been doing like, that for a while? <laughs> like, robots? You technically have a lot of these, then. There doesn't seem anything special about them, apart from that they have jetpacks or they can fly. And not actually the, what, the rockets in their feet. Mm. One of the biggest problems I had with this episode, Mando jumps into the water to save Baby Yoda. This is episode three. But as soon as the cage mm -hmm. closes, he seemingly forgets all about Baby Yoda and flails around like a tism. Then later, Sasha rescues him easily, barely an inconvenience, I believe the saying goes. Why was Mando unable to do the same thing? Why did he flail around? Wouldn't the priority always be Baby Yoda? Why did he resurface and cling to the bars when he should have been down there ripping that monster apart to get the baby, especially considering his weaponry? Yeah, it's interesting. Whenever they introduce a new character, that these new characters make Mandalorian look more incompetent because they come and do something that he was struggling with and they just do it easy. They wreck it. It happened with, you know, um, uh, I forget her name, but the female Mandalorian. And then with Boba Fett as well. It's just, okay. I think we brought it up. It was just like when he's grabbed the bars, uh, Whistling Birds would be perfect for that. It's going to go through the oh, bars yeah. and it's going to hit all of those dudes. But he just doesn't. Because he's Mandalorian. <laughs> You're yeah. right. Now there's a, a question hanging in the air. Because we've seen him use the whistling birds often. Um, and they're really effective. It's like, why doesn't he use them in so many of these other situations when it's going to be useful? Hey, he'll it's threaten just... to use it on Boba Fett, guy with a stick. He's like, I'll use them. Don't make me. <laughs> it's like, okay. I like how he says to them as well, he'll drop you like so quickly. It's like, the whistling birds take a few seconds to reach their targets. So... Yeah. You know, this is just a music interaction. This was on the Discord, okay? What bothered you guys so much about episode six? Basically everything. It's like, come on, be more specific. 
So to start off, oh, the no. fight choreography is atrocious, the Empire isn't formidable at all, and Mando, Boba, and Sniper Lady all make incredibly stupid decisions that they only survive because the Empire is slightly more stupid than they are. On top of that, the deal with Boba tries to strike with Mando is really stupid since he has absolutely no leverage, and Mando is too stupid to realize this, so he just goes along with it. Mando also drops his jetpack, but then decides to forget that it exists at all. As soon as the Empire shows up, Mando also forgets to lock his ship, which has been established he can do, and this is important because it allows Boba to get his armor back. Boba decides rather than to be the bounty hunter slash merc he's been established to be, he's going to be honorable and help out Mando. He says it's because he was paid by the armor, but that wasn't payment. He took it from Mando, and Mando just said, okay, I guess it belongs to you. Mando is also still one of the worst fathers slash babysitters out there, and while we're supposed to believe he actually cares for Grogu, he makes incredibly stupid decisions and leaves Grogu in a votable spot which allows him to be taken. Is that specific enough? <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah, that covers some of the criticisms of that episode, you know? Some. Mm -hmm. That's important to note. Some. Because we'll probably talk for a little while eventually about, like, which is the worst episode. It's gonna be between episode 6 of season 2 and episode 4 of season 1. It's like, these two are just... Disasters. Staggering. 4 was the ATST one, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. okay. EFAP <sighs> crew have become haters for hating's sake. They are incapable of having fun. <laughs> the uh, two hugger scene was hilarious. What the F happened to you guys? 90% of your criticisms are made up with no actual substance. It's an amazing show and <laughs> you are failing hard. Man, the amount of incorrect things. We're having tons of fun with this show for starters. <laughs> yeah. Right? It's worth I mean, keeping that in mind. For hate sake, right? Hang on, hang on. Because I've said more. I enjoy the show. I like it, okay? I prefer <laughs> that I have the Mandalorian if not. I really enjoy the fan service in it and i love the production values so but i can separate that from an objective review of it and point out yep. the problem because there are massive problems massive problems yes i like the idea um, that 90 percent of what we've said have no substance like damn what is the 10 percent that does have substance i'm curious yeah i wonder <laughs> and then to follow up with it's an amazing show i'm like oh i just i just love the ignorance and this, like, there's so much fucking things that we like that we point out. There's Eva the movies, things you like, like, the, the, fucking Lord of the Rings. You guys watched all the Lord of the Rings. Was I mean, like, I I'm do just... like things, <laughs> like, it's <sighs> worth noting. This it's is the insane. type of reaction that comes from someone when something they really enjoy is being criticized. Yeah, and it's pretty much. usually, and it comes from the thing where, where that mistake that people have, where they conflate. <laughs> If I like it, it also must be really good quality. It's like, no, no. It's okay. Like, it's fine. Nobody nobody cares. If you... I like Venom. Venom's an absurd, stupid movie, right? Nobody's <clears throat> going to flay you because you like something that isn't very good. <laughs> it's fine, all right? Mm -hmm. So this next one, there's no need to respond to any of it, okay? But uh, it has to be read on... We I've read this on Metal Stream already because it's so funny. I'm just going to go oh. through it all. I'll post it so you can tell when I'm done. And you may comment on whatever part you want once we're done, but it's it's such a ride. So here goes. I am saying that the Mandalorian, <laughs> uh, just as bad as each of the Lord of the Rings movies. Even if most of you Tolkien fans don't want to believe it, the Gondorian soldiers do not know how to fight, and when they do, they are following a murderer. Gimli, Bloom, and Mortensen. Bringing the dead men of Dunharrow to Minas Tirith makes the whole Rohirrim charge and killing the men and the orcs completely pointless. They could have come a half an hour before and would have also murdered all of the men and the orcs in Mordor. Jackson and the filmmakers love to rip off countless other video games and movies so that they are not racists when they are the true racists. For example, the Diablo with the Balrog they ripped off Pirates of the Caribbean and Ghostbusters with the ghosts. They also ripped off the prequels with the CGI Gollum, etc. <laughs> <laughs> what can still, you say? It's funny. Just gibberish. You're like, but, um. Players to that. Like, when you showed this to me on Metal Stream, I, yeah, I'm half thinking this has to be a troll because of how, um, yeah. It it's has to be, right? So disconnected from existence. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, w w what? Racist? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You just appreciate that it exists. You're just like, okay, so moving on. Um, <laughs> next one. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> this was uh, that video we showed at the end of um, our last coverage with the guy explaining that the episode 6 was fucking great. I snapped uh, three of the top comments. 
This made my childhood complete. Never got to see Boba in action. This gave me a nerd panic attack. It was amazing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next. I smiled like an idiot when I saw Slave One flying through the sky. Boba Fett has officially redeemed himself. Man, it's that easy. Oh. I literally couldn't believe it when Slave One flew in. I had to rewatch this episode a few times. Uh, so I will radiate the point. I think I'm going to take the, this opportunity, whatever I have. Uh, Slave One sucks. Perhaps it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. Hate yeah. on us for our takes, but that was Shad said it sucks. Okay, Shad, it wasn't us. It was it wasn't us. Shad did it. And I'm like, I've been the guy who has been willing to give Mandalorian the most benefit out of the doubt than anyone on EFAP, I think. So. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I'll, we're I'll uh... go on record about Slave One. The other thing is, this is why I think people are loving it. It's the fan service. Just seeing Boba Fett in action, that does it for people. And yeah. that's why I think it's so popular. And look, honestly, to its credit, I, I actually appreciate that Mandalorian is giving fans what they want um, instead of urinating yeah, if... on the stuff we love like we saw with the sequels if the choice is poorly written but fans like it or poorly written but fans don't like it it's like yeah i guess i'll choose the former yeah i guess i'd prefer people would be happier for sure i yeah. would prefer better writing in general but i know. just um we've said this before but i just don't like that that's the bar that everyone's like hey at least yeah. we like it it's like eh, but yeah you know <laughs> <laughs> all right i guess hey kid i'm gonna hit the little space boys room stay here <laughs> keep you know where the bathroom is yeah i know where it is but I'm gonna need some help with a mission first. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I like that one. Yeah. And yeah, uh, the only other thing that I was gonna mention was the Ro Rodriguez said for the Boba Fett episode only had 19 pages. And um, oh yeah, I saw that. Oh. So, so like very thin. But uh, he felt that uh, you know it felt like a fan fever dream when he read it in terms of oh my god, Boba Fett is gonna be. I think what was written. Would, would be like, then action happens, and then they carry on writing, you know what I mean? Like, because that's down to the director and choreographers, I guess, I don't know. And yeah, he said he just he just added loads of action to it, and he was really happy to. And that, to me, is kind of embarrassing, production-wise. It's like, we got some pages here, need some action, throw it in, did it, everyone's gonna love it. Alright, moving on, next episode. It's like, oh, You kind of hope that it's gonna be a little bit more, um, mm. stable kind of than that. It seems to imply they're not putting much effort into the script. It's like, um, he could get to Yoda really quickly if he has a jetpack. Quickly! Uh, uh, he has to put his jetpack down. Why? I don't- I don't- oh. no, He just does it. <laughs> what Boba Fett said, put down your jetpack. I was like, hey, hey, why? <laughs> <laughs> like, maybe take off your whistling birds. They might be more of a threat. Absolutely! He activates them in a split second, they can kill anyone. It's like, maybe, maybe ask him to take the gauntlet off, I don't know. Yeah, like, if he takes the gauntlet off, he loses the control for most of his armor stuff. That might be the right thing, but the jetpack? Okay. Because <laughs> when... that's what you're saying. That's like exactly one of those moments where more you're saying, this is the script saying, oh, hi, I'm here. This is Yeah, because we do it in our recording. We're like, why would he want him to take the jetpack off? It's like, what is this What is this tied to? Is this going to be relevant? Like, does he need the jetpack for something else later? And funnily enough, that what we're imagining in that moment is better than what we got, which is, yes, but there was nothing stopping him from picking it back up. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so... <laughs> He just decides not to put the jetpack on, which is really useful, you know, to get to cover quickly and all these things. And he could call it back to him at any time. And it's just like, ah. Uh. Bonus meme. It's just bonus pretty... memes. Now. Yeah, bonus. Yeah, it's, it's... yeah th this is me watching from the table shooting thing on. It's it's all fresh for me. I had to leave. So and this is all new for me. We will so I can't wait to enjoy. see how they... There's things I've discovered, clarifications to make, and uh, more criticisms to add, but we'll get to them once the episode's Never over. I was coming up with stuff in my head all through the day when I had to leave. All, all <laughs> through that night, I was like, whoa, wait, 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 yeah. So, um, yeah. Is order. And when they realize that... Like, this is the episode that's come the closest to approaching, like, a concept. Yeah, yeah, and imagine yeah. how incredible this payoff would be if Bill Boo was a main character. And we'd learned all about this shit. But never mind. Dude, the amount of time! <laughs> it's like 20 seconds! That guy isn't even that looking at him in the back! Nothing. He's not even he's looking at him! <laughs> he's, yeah, he's, they all he have... did nothing! Hey guys, remember <laughs> all... the thousands of people in the room adjacent to this one? Yeah, they well, yeah, gone. all heard this. The show it's is, important that you put yeah. on this helmet. Yeah. And it doesn't matter now, you've already seen them. It just, it's like when you take a picture or when you've been recorded and you try to... Oh, there's three. What took them so long? 
Why are they not shooting? They're just running in to die. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, good thing there's enough room to actually walk out here. Yeah, otherwise that would be the end for you guys. Look, we're nearly here. This, I showed this guy to Jay now. This, here he comes. This guy. Uh, <laughs> That's fucking pathetic. Okay. <laughs> and yeah, um... How many stormtroopers go through the window before the rest are like, um, eh, all right? <laughs> Maybe not. I think it was Shad was immediately like, wow, lucky they went out on the side that the snipers were uh, available on. Yeah. Lucky there's even windows. Lucky there's breakable coverage. What has this guy been doing this whole time yeah, when his friends have been getting shot by snipers? Also, lucky there's a structure that they can climb. Like, don't y'all care about these two snipers? <laughs> Does anyone give a shit? They literally all carry guns if they're auto snipers. Also, this makes Fennec, her her skills look kind of less impressive because apparently Kara, she's a sniper too. Apparently. And they never miss. Like, jeez. Wow, that guy was running behind him the whole time. He's he a super mega marksman sniper? What's he doing? Oh, fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Well, they just left it there so that a single shot could... <laughs> Is it gonna blow up the whole base or just the... I don't think it blew up the whole no, it, base. No one misses. Yeah, but yeah it's no, not yeah. a shot. Everyone what he just did is a pretty shot. amazing shot. He was standing on a moving ship from, like, that far away. He's like Fennec. You ready, Rex? One thing about Slave 1 is I noticed in the Rogue Squadron games, it's really easy... No, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> <gasps> yeah. <laughs> that seems like a waste. Yeah, pretty intense waste. But whatever. Oh, two ships. Yeah. And plus the precision. Yeah. Well. Yeah. The two ships have to be in a, you know, exactly. right there right and off. right there, yeah. and they, uh and they have to see that thing coming and not do anything about it. I mean, Valor and... I'd be pissed at him if I were Mando. You nearly got us all killed. Yeah, that too. But it's par for the course with these people. Mm -hmm. yeah, Can't believe you know, it was that easy. Didn't make it out alive back there. I had a feeling bad. they would do this. I will. Can you stay with the crew so that you're quippy inside? Oh, I have gloves just like that! I, I seriously, the gloves he's wearing, I have those. <laughs> you could buy it on Amazon. Okay. <laughs> I, I Let me go get it. I could go get a picture. It's on screen now. There you go. <laughs> you get the coordinates? He's staying there, Rags. They'll leave without him. It's like, oh, okay. So I just left him here. Yeah. And uh, I guess he'll come back in season three for an episode. Yeah, that'd be, you know, hmm. anything that's interesting, I'll accept. You have something I want. He means more to me than you will ever know. I don't know if you'd want to tell him that. Yeah. Also, I can't wait to, because we've only got an episode left. How the fuck yeah. are they going to explain how Mando and three guys can assault like this huge, you know what? I, it's really fine. <laughs> well, be hey, fine. look, right, four people, you know, they just blew up a, uh, an entire station, so. Well, as long as I mean, you have I mean, face scanners, we'll be fine. Because if we're thinking in A New Hope, right, but they literally weren't trying to kill them when they escaped. There's a lot of things they do in A New Hope to try and account for how everything functions in there with this show. We have, what, half an hour? If the last episode's an hour, they might have a shot at being able to do something. I don't know. This is, uh, this is about sums up my, uh, yeah. my reaction right now, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like that one. Wow, that was... Mando's on okay. top of the transport, and you got some dudes jumping on there with their, with their spears things. The first the one goes to strike, uh, Mando, misses because Mando punches him in the chest, and then ducks underneath it. And so he travels a little bit further forward. Looks like he stumbles a little bit. That's fine. Mando's onto the second one. Grabs it and tussles with him for a bit. Hits him in the head. And then returns to hit down the one that he just pushed past. And for some reason, he no longer has his weapon. And he looks dazed and confused oh. as he got off the floor. Yeah, oh, you're right. Whoops. Where is okay. it? Yeah. Maybe he dropped it? Oh, dude. So oh, this yeah, is a um, big one. Yeah, this was sent to me by Play Creations. I uh, We didn't see this. Um, but... Guys, that's uh, that's just, just that's just an inch away from as bad as TLJ because at least with TL, uh, at least with this, like the knife wasn't to the back of Ray. If you know what I mean, like it's not. Yeah. It, it's, it's like disappeared the moment he's gonna be able to stab her in the back. Well, this one is he could have done some damage to Mando there if his weapon hadn't disappeared. But never mind. First off, 
uh, two things. I don't know why they just don't arm these and throw them. Oh, well, so... Yeah, why... Uh, we can, I can blast all that, like, so there's gonna be specific criticisms for that one, but I'd say the broadest one that destroys all of this is their last resort in this whole sequence is to start up grenades and throw them from their, uh, ships, right? Not jump Dark, onto the this ship. Doesn't, yeah, because this doesn't, it doesn't seem like a throw that you could fuck up. Yeah, and so it's just like, wait, why don't you just always do this? Yeah, especially because those grenades are apparently magnetized and they stick to things. As we know... why lower risk. Yeah, and as, and as we know, like, the truck can blow up just from driving too fast. So yeah. you throw a grenade and, um, at it, like, yeah, it'll Oh, yeah, it it's all going up. Uh, we'll you know, even going of... further back, before the pirates even attack, I don't know why they're called pirates. Fuck it, um, we're just calling them pirates. <laughs> so we're gonna call them pirates, because whatever, fuck it, it doesn't matter. It, they, the riders don't give a shit, neither do I. They go back past the wreckage of a lot of these transport vehicles, so they know they're in high danger of being attacked. Each one of these vehicles has a crew of two, one of which being the driver, they're armed with pistols. They don't even lock their hatches, which is how Kara gets into the first one that they steal. And the hatch for the gas, the space nitroglycerin, is also unlocked. Yeah, they just when they, they know they are at risk of being attacked. I know oh. someone's gonna pick you up on this. It's like they shove their little stick things into them and wedge open the doors. You shouldn't be able to it's do that stick. if it's locked. Yeah, the stick. It's a stick. I don't. People have been saying this on right. Twitter. They're like, it's not unlocked. They use this. To, it's like, guys, if you can wedge open a fucking secure lock with a stick, it's not un. It's not <laughs> locked. That's not locked. When they're making this plan for these trucks, they see two go by them in the space of about two minutes. They steal one. We've seen two. One blew up. So that's four at least. They are the only transport that made it in that day. Jesus the Christ. only one. The only How one. inefficient is this system? How well, it's like we have the fact that they're using wheeled vehicles, period, which is yeah. insane yeah, considering that. It's like, why? I don't know why you'd use them anyway in Star Wars. Speeders are ubiquitous. Uh, they just seem to be more efficient and better in every way. Them. The yeah, and, have hovering things. and if you're carrying space nitroglycerin, which and if you jostle it, it explodes. You should not be using a wheeled vehicle. You need to be like floating in the air safely without any terrain to wobble you around or shake you about. Another thing for I forget, uh, the pirates, uh, the first guy on the pirate speeder, one of the guys hops on and then another guy proceeds to hop on as well. Like, why is the second guy hopping on? You know what that first guy's doing, right? Needs help. He's about to blow that. He's gonna about to rig that thing to explode. Why are you also jumping on? And there is a huge amount of time where he just isn't shooting them when he should be. He should be popping them off those uh, <sighs> those speeders, and he just isn't. He's just watching them, and he lets them jump on, and he's just not pow, pow, pow killing them. It's like the one situation. If a, he had a blaster, there's just no threat. <laughs> because it's and just it's like, the boom, 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 boom. one time. They're armed with sticks. They have no cover. They're just walking towards him. And of course, it jams. You remember how, like, when we watched it at first, you went back to the recording to, to see if the stormtroopers missed any of the pirates? For All a second, the I thought they hit. missed one shot, but they hit they hit him directly in the chest. <laughs> and also, <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what the pirates are thinking, charging that bridge <laughs> with their well, sticks. I mean, this is like, what are y'all doing? Y'all want to live, like, right? Yeah, this is like a bonsai charge against a machine ten machine gun ness. Also, just by casually fucking checking this episode out, so Mando for some reason doesn't shoot the one that he clearly could shoot. Instead, he decides I'm going to go on top and get him from the top. It's like okay, the guy doesn't have a stick. He just opens the thing himself, with two handles. There is no prying. He's the first one. So I'm sorry guys, people who are saying you had to pry it open, you don't even have to. They just- the whole reason that they have them pry it, if Mando is down by- he's being wrestled by two people later. Do you remember in like, the, there's three people in the background who are fiddling with the thing? It's like, what's taking them so yeah. long? It's like, they're all trying to pry it open with their sticks. And it's like, they can just open it. It's like, why are they doing that? And it's like, they're doing that because they want to make it a stressful situation where can Mando do it, can Mando not do it? But apparently they're just oh. really stupid. This literally handles. <sighs> it's not locked. This fight is... And it looks like they open it with, like, the stone tips of the ears with stone tools wrapped to one end of them is bizarre to me. I mean, at least um, some of them are at least are blades. I just got a shot of it. Like, they like, like they, they stick the, the stone-tipped spears... <laughs> oh my god. ...into this, lo into this, metal, this locked metal panel on this, this advanced space vehicle. They just open it up, I guess. That's so yeah. embarrassing. You th you know someone designed that and was like, that's so cool, right? Aren't these weapons interesting? It's like, 
Oh my god, that's terrible. Interesting. This is like the first weapon that mankind created. <laughs> the spear, the, the sharpened pointy stick, and then they're like, let's tie a rock to the front. Also, <laughs> this one guy comes up here, and he's got his uh, rock stick, and he hits Mando's shoulder, the, the, the shoulder pad, and it shatters. Yeah, it just shatters. He hit it with a rock. He I'm hit it with like... a stick and a rock. I have a question. Why wouldn't you store these things uh, vertically and not horizontally? Yeah, that might be a good idea. Like, Because whenever I have, uh, is it gas or is it a liquid? I mean, I either no way, idea. you'd think that it's just really odd that they're stored at the very, very top here on a panel horizontally. Because if you don't want it to shake around or anything, you obviously you store it vertically. Whatever. So yeah, I just got... I've got assorted criticisms, uh, just a couple, but I think we may have brought it up in passing, I can't remember, just gonna make sure. Mayfeld, um, he's like, oh, that guy's gonna recognize me. Abort mission, it's over. And, like, first thought, I, th I think we brought this up, it's like, just put your helmet back on and take it off for the scan, that's all you need to do. But secondly, is that the only terminal in the entire base? It's in the cafeteria? Or like yeah, it's in the cafeteria. It's got the battle plans for the, for Moff Gideon's starship and everything, it's there in the cafeteria. <laughs> the chances of his, uh, his commander being in there. Oh, Incredibly wow. unlikely. Wow, that's, uh, that's and, some bad luck, I suppose. And then it's, he doesn't recognize him, you're like, oh my god, there's so many things that, are, oh, alright, yeah, these are, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, something I picked up when I was just checking out uh, pieces for the editing already was uh, the scanner doesn't just require a face, okay? It requires a face that can be recognized as non-blacklisted by the Empire. Which is not everyone who isn't in the Empire. So, for example, you and I could get in pretty easily. Yeah, because, yeah, even though we're not part of the organization, um, as long as we have a face... Yeah, uh, so so I was like, the prerequisite. The criticism doesn't change at all because the amount of people who are like evil, according to the, I don't even know what database they're using for this and how they sort of figure this out. It is incredibly stupid that your security system has a face scanner that only blacklists like criminals according to the Empire, and that's it. And then it gives you access to sensitive information. It's like, what else? What, how is that in any way defensible? You'd think that scanning the face would give you a particular level of access. It'd be like, ah, private Gonzo, or general person, and, and you know, depending on that, whatever happens. And it's funny because I thought that was the whole point of bringing Bill, Bill Beer along. It's like, oh, we need Empire Bro, because uh, they didn't need him at all. They could have just spoken to him in that prison place. Been like, hey, how do you get, you know, Information X? And he could be like, oh access terminal and download the the coordinates or the the whatever for the ship you just need a face that isn't recognized by the empire as a bad man okay bye bill bear it's like we don't need you at all yeah um of all the things to do an imperial terminal so i guess the base on navarro's destroyed or something every terminal there is gone i'm sure i guess yeah, so I guess there was no terminal in the hideout where the client was, uh, was you know, hanging around. Yeah, I'm sure there wasn't. Whatever helps make this story less um, weak, I'm sure that was the case. <laughs> yeah, like this was the this is what the option they went uh, well, the, the option they went for. The other funny but, part is like he's like, oh, you're gonna need a terminal. There's there's one on this planet, and it's like any other options or is, is it just we're just doing yeah, that. Yeah, it's okay. like can we can we even explore other options as if they exist? Because when you think about our plan is to miraculously steal this thing very easily that we should not be able to do. But like, what if you get asked, who are you? What are your orders? What do I do when I get there? Where do I pull up? Hey, Bill Burr, you... I, as Mando, might be asked what my chain code is or what my operation number is or what group I'm designated with. Could you tell me how I'm supposed to answer questions like that? Lucky that only comes up the once, and then Bill Bear ruins it all, because Bill Bear's like, oh god, it would be really bad if we were captured, but also I really hate this guy, so I'm gonna shoot him. What we saw on the screen is like you explaining an arc casually to a friend about an idea you have. This is like, um, a 12-year-old game master designing a mission for his players. It always reeks of this, this potential that is never capitalized on. And it's a shame because not only is Bill Bear Pretty decent actor. Um, his addition yeah, to this. Yeah, so. um, he's surprisingly good for yeah, uh, a comedian. And, I, and, I, and it's really sad because like his, we desperately need his attitude in this show. <laughs> yeah, we need someone to just be like, well, even though he should be doing it way more, I'm so glad we got what we got. I'm so glad that he's he said things like you know the mask thing and his general attitude, his his second guessing, cynical nature because. It's the only thing approaching a character that we have in this show. Yep. Mando doesn't have one. Kara doesn't have one. Finnick doesn't have one. Boba doesn't have one. Grief doesn't have one. 
So it's like none of these characters are characters. They're all oh basically interchangeable. So that's it. <laughs> you bring on episode eight, I suppose. Hopefully I can get this edited before we watch that one and that's our big finale then. It's so disappointing. Well, uh, I don't know if it's worth saying maybe we need that one last episode, but how do you guys think this stacks against season one? I think it's worse. I think it's worse. I'm I'm not. I, it's either on par or worse. I because I, I, I. Oh yeah, it's because it's definitely it's not close. better. Definitely. Oh not yeah, better. it's it's really tough it because we're getting into the minutia. I think. And I think it's worth remembering that the season finale of season one is like a two out of ten. Yeah, and so, <laughs> so this first half so. of this sort of big finale of we need the information, we need to get to the ship, get to the ship, get baby. Because of course this season will end with Baby Yoda being rescued, I imagine. I don't know if they're bold enough to kill off Baby Yoda, especially with the merchandising. I don't think so. Baby Yoda's here to stay. John Favreau's been writing basically all these episodes, right? No. Is it bad that I can't actually tell because they're all so fucking bad they're all terrible yeah so well, let, in the me, first season up. favreau wrote the first four episodes john favreau wrote the first four dave filoni wrote and directed the ahsoka one john favreau wrote episode six that was robert rodriguez and this one was directed by rick famuyiwa i think he was one of the directors from season one too and he wrote it too the last episode is written by john favreau it says i don't know man he's phoning this in hardcore but like this is all he's doing doing at the moment isn't it like know. this is his thing i think it is i mean he he did lion king but he's done with that i think he's doing star wars stuff now right well either way people consider it the savior of star wars right now so <laughs> good for you and uh, i look forward mm. to seeing whatever you produce for episode eight it's gonna be wonderful but yeah every episode of season two is not cracked to five one that came closest was episode Ahsoka, probably. five yeah, yeah, yeah. but that's mostly just because it didn't have as much wrong with it. Not that it did more right. Yeah, it well, was really no, boring. It had less wrong I with it because like less happened. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, that's so. true. It was very straightforward, which is... <laughs> An improvement <sighs> upon everything else, but it was still pretty bored. Because this is the thing. A well-written Batwoman episode would probably look like that in terms of... Uh, there's just, like, Kate Kane's talking to somebody for the whole episode. We're like, well, yeah, there wasn't much to get wrong. Because, of course, the battle still pretty much sucked in the Ahsoka episode. There's a lot of stuff when you slow it down that's really fucking dumb, which is the same for every fight in Mandalorian, so I don't know why I even mentioned that really, I guess. Uh, everybody operated in mostly a normal way, and it's the story of freeing a town, nice and easy. Just kill a despot, I guess. The Empire is worthless in this, and this episode accents uh, just further the issue that was present in season one and has been prevalent in season two. The Empire is worthless. They can't hit any... The, the, the plot demands that they be ineffectual. Everything about how they act, how they behave, what their strategy is, what their equipment they use is, it makes them look like the biggest blundering fools in the galaxy. And I can't feel... I, I feel no sense of elation when our heroes succeed. Their triumph me means nothing. It's like I said before, if you if if your if your opponent is a third grader, then you don't you're not cool when you beat them. You're not you're not skilled when you overcome them. If you don't have competent enemies, imagine the movie Zulu and all of the Zulu were like stormtroopers. That movie would suck. You want to make your enemies ferocious. You want well, to make just, them you know, deadly. It is expected that the good guys will win, but that doesn't mean that the enemy are worthless. Well, yeah, I I want to see the good guys have like, to if the fight good, for their win. Yeah, you know? they have to earn it, not... Well, um, I, I, I think the dichotomy comes in that they need a force to battle, but they also need to beat them. And so this force has to be huge because they have to, it has to be so insurmountable, but at the same time they win. So it's just like, the, it just constantly generates these scenarios where the, the stormtroopers are embarrassing. A lot of people are using the argument, I, I know you guys have heard this, where it's like, uh, the stormtroopers are consistent. They've been awful now for years. It's like, no. okay, so that's not even, even if it were true, it wouldn't be a good argument. Like, as in, like, they keep getting presented as bad, therefore it is now consistent. Like, no, these are trained soldiers. You don't ever get away with this. These are, these are stormed, and remember, like, we had an episode four, where you had the random accountant going around killing stormtroopers. Yeah, and I just want to say, though, but, like, their argument doesn't even stand up because of the, um, what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, at least 17 pirates that are gunned down without missing a shot. Like, sorry. This yeah, <laughs> stormtroopers are selectively, they're selectively skilled. It depends on the context. 
But when they need to kill Mandalorian, well, either their bullets miss or they hit his armor. The TIE Fighters defend oh, yeah. Mando. It's like, wow, you guys nailed it. I mean, you, you nailed it in terms of, like, you were still risky as fuck, but you still did the job, I guess. It's more than they ever do against the heroes. Because, like I said, I remember in Rogue One, or sorry, not Rogue One, a Rogue Squadron, uh, where you could play a Slave One. But if you did, like, dogfight, if you, if you played against other people, Slave One was a really easy target. Mm -hmm. It has a very big profile from pretty much all angles, especially the rear end. It is a huge circle, very difficult to miss. And the fact that these TIE Fighters don't just destroy it is... <laughs> yeah. Like, what's the purpose of a TIE Fighter to get destroyed? What's the purpose of a Stormtrooper to get shot? In fairness, what's the purpose of anything? He did use a seismic charge, and I, I think I remember you, you like the sound of that, and you think they're kind of cool, right? So that's that's good, right? Yeah, it? and I don't know how seismic charges work in space, because there's no Neither medium for it, but whatever, fine. I, it, still, it seems overkill for TIE Fighters, because they're worthless and they can't hit you. And it also it, had to be perfect to work the way it did. I don't like the devaluing of skill in the show as well. Um, Fennec Strand, I think's her name. She, you know, comes back from the dead. She's a sniper. That's what she is. She is a sniper. Most well, like, Sniping infamous is, assassin, right? Yeah, infamous assassin, known all over, crack marksman. Except she also shoots Mando and his best guard as well. But that's fine. That's just mm. the universe working in his favor. <laughs> so apparently Cara Dune is also, to the same degree, a marksman who never misses. She was a shock trooper, not a sniper. Those are two completely different skills. Is everyone mm -hmm. just good at everything? They're good at everything when they need to be. I, I, that's... This is one of the things I, I feel like they miss out on. It's cool to have characters who are good at one thing and then bad at other things. Well, I mean, what Specialists. What's the point of Mass Effect if, like, the whole point is that each person on the team had their unique skills? Uh, I am good at doing this, so I will utilize my skills in this mission in this way. You are yeah. good at that, so you do this. That's um, the whole point of, like, teams, is the idea of individually we each bring something to yeah. the table that contributes to a broader whole... I mean, that's what the Avengers is, right? Yeah, yep. it's like a, it's like a uh, choosing your class in a video game, right? Yeah. It's, it, or building it, it, your party, you know? Yeah, like exactly. You, you, you don't want to, you know, triple up on snipers. You want to have, you know, you want to be able to cover all your bases and everything. And Yeah, like when I you just... fight the Elite Four in Pokemon, you know, you got like your water types and you probably have a fire type just to make sure you cover all your bases. And then, you know, you get like a dragon type, uh, and, um, you know, you get your dark type just again. Dragonite. Like, cover all your bases is the point that we're trying to make. <laughs> And yeah, uh, what's the point when you don't even need to? You just grab a random group of people and they're all going to be really skilled at the thing you're doing at the time, whatever it is. It'd be so nice for characters, if, especially Cara Dune, if he's like, all right, we'll cover you from the ridge. And Cara's like, I'm not a sniper. I was a shock trooper. And like, I don't know what I can, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a good shot, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a marksman. I, you know, I'm a, I even, carry around a squad automatic weapon and I punch people. You could even have Fennec be like, oh, you'll be great. And then, and then she misses during it. And you have Fennec. And she offers her, her advice. Yeah, she's just she, she's just like yeah. hold still, aim the shot, yeah, aim like, ahead of the target. Aim higher. Somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Don't aim for the head. Aim for the centered mass. Oh um, my god! Why did uh, that would have been aim cool. Aim higher. <laughs> uh, shoot! That shoot when you're really breathing cool. out. Lean your weapon up against the rock to steady your shots. Things like that. So characters could learn. Kara and Fennec could have like a little bit of a camaraderie going where they talk oh, to each other. Could... Especially because remember, Fennec is an infamous assassin, and Kara yeah. Dune is a marshal with the new. Republic. They never mention that. No. By the way, don't. how one of them is a criminal and one of them's a lawman now. That could be a cool little dynamic that between them. Be and you, you, have have the, you have the you have the the rogue and the paladin. The stormtroopers react to the fact that snipers exist, and a couple of them split her off to try and go and get them at wherever the hidey hole is. And like when you know they pass through some trees, get up the 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 hill. Fanix like panics seeing them come so close, and then Kara can like you know knock them the fuck out. And it, it, it could just be like a yeah. moment of hey, we both we both have our thing. Yeah, we're both doing our thing. Yeah, like cover me. And so Fennec can provide sniper fire. Kara can punch stormtroopers in the face. <laughs> and and see, this is where the mortars would come in handy. Use the mortars to dislodge. The snipers from their positions. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, and they, they'd, they'd have they mortars have in a there. base. This is, I, I can believe that for sure. Especially this base, one that's attacked regularly by the locals, I guess. You think you'd have mortars ready at the entrances with crews ready to operate because apparently it's really, really dangerous. We mainly just see what they did and then be like, what you were trying to do, you did wrong. We rarely go, like, hey, what if you did all of these other really cool things that you never even think about because your show is shit? What about that? And you this is just off the 
top of our heads Look, immediately. I'll go as far as saying they are half-baked, but they are they have potential, a lot of the stuff we've just said. We, we yeah, just need to refine all of it. We're just throwing out these, you know, ideas, these concepts for what you could do. It's off the top of our heads immediately after watching this episode. I'm just trying to think, like, have we ever seen a show that lacks character as much as this one? Maybe, like, you... This TV even, show... Even, you know, like... Even Batwoman pretends to have characters, right? Like, it does all of the... Like, this is the gay one. This is the one Oh, that's... yeah, like, Batwoman has character. Like, well, they have... Like, there's a reason why we like Jacob. Because we like, yeah, Jacob's personality is he hates Batwoman and he wants her to leave the city. He's like, hey, I, I like this guy. I agree with him. <laughs> it's good shit. Maybe, uh... Maybe, like, the kind of show that fits that bill is some kind of network TV, you know, like, some police procedural where they the characters don't really have any I guess traits at all. The way where I was going with that is like I don't know that I've seen a show ever that does this badly with characterization, and it's not even like contradictive. It's just a lack of it. Because Mando has no character at all, and he's got and the most screen time. Very, well, he is the only main character His in the show. His co-star really. is a characterless baby. A puppet. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. I don't even. That's why I think we liked this one. Probably the I don't know about you guys, but probably the most out of all of it in terms of just oh, Bill Burr. I think I stuff. like it the most. Yeah, I think I like it the most, but it's riddled with. Problems. I like this episode the most, yeah, because it flirts with the idea of a concept. The idea that they they stroll in, they roll into the um bay and all of the stormtroopers are like thrilled that two of their friends survived like yeah we did it we saved our two friends our buddies it's like it makes no sense based on their previous behavior they don't give a shit about each other for whatever reason i guess these people aren't people but like you you're like man wow these guys are really happy that y'all made it you know it's like the, the idea that we have to have the, the empire has to be evil all of them are evil and they're all stupid idiot morons who don't care about each other and they're all terrible and evil and this just barely brushes just a little this brushes like a like an errant spider web on your face. It just slightly lightly brushes in an annoying way with the concept of them exploring something that isn't black and white. Yeah. And boring. I just got a notification um, as well. Newest comment on one of our coverages of a uh, Mandalorian. The opening sentence. I really like this episode when watching it, but <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, I already yeah, know where that's I, going. I like, know what you mean. This is what all of the, these episodes do, is uh, they just gotta last long enough that you remember it well. Like, they just gotta remain stable enough in the moment so that you remember, you come away saying, yeah, you guys should check out Mandalorian, it's good. I can see how a total normie who is not critical of anything would love this show. So, yeah, we've been told already on, on, on Twitter that we've gone way too far on this episode, so it'll be interesting to see the comments on this video. <laughs> see, yeah, whatever. I think at this point, with the incredibly large amount of examples of incredibly major errors that we've had throughout this season, it's getting a little tired at this point to be like, wow, this show's amazing, why are you being so mean to it? Why are you treating it like Batwoman? It's like, oh, because this is Batwoman-level writing. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, it's Batwoman-level writing. Writing, but with like a hundred and fifty million dollar budget, and like at least with Batwoman, it's more exciting. <laughs> it's <laughs> funny. There's always something going on. Um, and Batwoman, I can't believe I'm saying this. Batwoman tries to have themes. It does. It really fucking does. It actually does try. It fails miserably, and it's it so cute how miserably. they try, and I love it. But they try. <laughs> God bless their hearts, they try. Like, this episode is going to be about identity. This one's about duality. This one's about, like, the concept of growing up. This one, and it's like, you see it on its face, and it's like, ah, oh, that's cute. They'll have the characters going through similar things to try and represent it. But, like, I can't for the life of me pull out anything of any of the Mandalorian episodes except this one. This is the only one where it's like, hey, there's something going on here, actually. It would be really weird to have something go on at this point because yeah. it would come from nowhere basically um and it would be shocking and strange i want them to try trying yeah. let's think batwoman tries and fails and that's part of what gives it its incredible charm <laughs> it's charm yeah. batwoman is charming it is so it really is. wonderfully cute how they try and we are getting closer um, and closer to seeing more batwoman I guess that's the wow, end of just, bonus uh, meme, which is probably half as long as the full video. <laughs> so it's like, hey. I like they do like the video ads. They're like, want some more commentary? Here we are. It's like, <laughs> all right then. Uh, episode was really bad. It ranks probably as like on the lower end, I think. Seven. Uh, this is going to get worse the more you think about it. Uh, so yeah, five and two are at the top. Wait. Yeah, for this is objectively five and two are at the top. And then in the middle, we have three, one, and four, which and I think are bottom, somewhat maybe. interchangeable. Somewhat, and then at yeah. the bottom, we definitely have six and seven easily at the bottom. I'm curious no if contest. eight is going to uh, eight. Like things are going to happen in eight, man. So <laughs> will it be the worst one? Could be. Eight's probably going to be the worst one. Uh, if 
I don't think it'll reach five and two because five and two benefit from having so little happen. I like uh, how when nothing happens, the show is is not at its worst. When there's no characters, plot, or even world building, it's okay. You know, a lot of people are like, what do you mean? Soka was in it. It's like, I mean, I guess. Okay. She killed people with her lightsaber <laughs> and she said some stuff. I don't know. And, uh, from what I've heard, a lot of people who like the Clone Wars were not happy with her portrayal in, uh, in this show, right. so. I wasn't, okay. and I haven't seen the Clone Wars. Well, she was dull and boring, was, yeah, and her delivery happy. was stiff. I guess what I'm referring was... to is that she's inconsistent. We were just like, she's lame. Like, could you have a character? Did yeah, you have... Maybe that's the reason why people are upset, because she's very peppy and stuff in the Clone Wars. Uh, but be. then again, she's like 30 years older, so... She's seen some things. Slowly, she's getting luked. <laughs> Slowly but surely. Yeah. Well, she's got her own show don't get luked. to worry about, right? I I'm guessing Dave Filoni is going to be, like, heading her show. I don't know. Probably, yeah. I think fans are gonna be upset if someone else takes control of it, but they'll have nothing to complain about if he does, right? Because he's the one who made it. Uh, he wrote it though, so it's interesting that they. Oh have yeah, well, with the way I was, I was just kind of fucking around there because, of course, I know yeah. a creator could destroy their own character. Of course, they can. Oh yeah, no, I know. <laughs> oh, I know. Get hype, we, we find audience. Something. We are coming for episode eight in however long. <laughs> See you there, I suppose. I don't know. Yeah, everyone. It's gonna be great. We'll see how episode eight stacks up. We'll see how uh, how dumb the Empire is in the next episode. How Baby Yoda gets maybe rescued. Hopefully Mando dies and we get to follow Boba Fett around. Or thing, but Bill he's Burr, sort of you know? Or Bill Burr, Burr, yeah. Boba Fett together. I want to see what he gets up to on that planet. Where does he go? What does he do? Where does he go from there? It's amazing how they make combat so boring. They do make it quite boring, don't they? Pretty lame. You can... You compare this with all the other stuff, and you're just it's so boring. For how much they lean onto the action and rely on the action, it's yeah, all so There's like so two bad. action set pieces every episode. And they're all bad. Oh, uh, they're all they're dumb. All... That's something worth mentioning, right? It's like, these are incredibly formulaic at this point, these episodes. Yeah, usually there's like some kind of opening hook, and then there, there'll be a little bit of dialogue, then some kind of action scene pretty quickly. And then there'll be some lull again, and then like another big action scene where there's a big explosion at the end, and the good guys win. And hopefully, Amanda will have obtained a small amount of uh, material or information by the end of the episode. Or information that takes him to his next location. Yeah. Welcome to every episode of The Mandalorian, guys. And remember, we referred to season one as filler. Like it was, it was a season. You could probably skip it was most half, of it. It was half filler. Yeah, half the episodes had really nothing to do at all with the plot. And even the ones that did, not much of the episodes themselves oh, were. It's it's not hard to like. Yeah. And so season two, because I was about to say like, is season two the filler season? It's like we already had one of those. We're doing great. Anyway, bye. Bye everyone. Bye. Toodaloo. See you later. But that's yeah. That's all I've got. This is probably going to be the longest of uh, all the Mando episode coverage. And Ooh. it's not even that long until the next one comes out. I got a lot of editing to get going with. Uh, well, anything else anybody wants shit. to wants to talk about before we say goodbye to the precious EFAP audience? We like things. Stop saying we don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it fucks me off a lot. The stuff, the stuff we like in Mando. <laughs> We've pointed out things we like in Mando. We we even said. Oh man, I like the ice uh, on on Mando. I like Mando's helmet. I like the frog piss. Then we were like, man, I wish that, like all of our sort of like stuff was a little bit more like substantive. Like we could talk about what's so meaningful to like these things, other than just the way they yeah. look. There was a, there was more of that in this episode. You guys, uh, there was several things to compliment on with what they did, but they could have done better, of course. But you know, with Bill mm -hmm. Burr and like certain things that they were hinting at. So yeah, I mean, we even said like thank fuck finally it's a character <laughs> like yeah. something is happening so, yeah, yeah very excited for the next episode yeah, it's gonna be great we'll see you all there yeah see bye. you there bye yeah, well. Why would someone at Hamilton want to ambush the convoy? What'd you bring me? <laughs>